spent a magical prom night playing scratch-off tickets in the parking lot this week. According to sources, chauffeurs nationwide began their enchanting evening by cramming swank magazines into their glove compartments before dropping off their students at a school gym, working through a stunning assortment of lotto cards, and dining upon a wide range of microwave-heated taquitos from a nearby 7-Eleven. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, me, Ian. And me, Mark. All right, join us online over at freetalklive.com. And do enjoy the features there. Those other talk show hosts charge you for their websites. Go see ours for free, and I bet you'll get more for free at freetalklive.com than you'll pay for on all those other talk show host sites. So we've got, of course, lots to discuss here tonight. You may, of course, bring up anything that's on your mind. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Coming up, Mark, you've got a story about a police officer who actually has been fired. Now, it is a pretty rare thing to see a police officer get fired. Usually, the circumstances around a cop getting fired are when they do something that's sort of of a sexual nature. Like, I remember there was the one cop who... Uh, mowed his lawn in his boxer briefs, and he got fired for that. Uh, There's and- pl- plenty of them that have, uh, you know, overstepped the lines in sexual ways that have been fired. There's no doubt about that. Right. Generally, they don't tend to get fired if they uh, will kill somebody or. Eleven hundred house- people were killed last year by uh, police officers in the United States. And that, now that does include a few, maybe perhaps oh, guilty people. I'm sure that but- it includes a great deal of them. <laughs> but they don't even get fired when they kill innocent people who haven't harmed anybody else. Uh, they- but I think that it's important. We just talked about this last week, uh, earlier this week, uh, that to note that in Canada, 47 people were killed by police. And Canada is a country that's a tenth as large. That means that, um, you know, there's there, there's some extra, like something's different in the United States. Also, I think they looked at Germany was zero. Great Britain was like three. Um, I can't remember what yeah. the numbers were Wasn't exactly. Iceland one or something? Iceland was one in, in the, the entire history of Iceland. Yeah. So there's definitely a discrepancy out there. And in fact, when we see cases of the police abusing you know, average folks, it almost seems like every time, the, not every time, but it's darn close. It seems like it 90 plus percent of the time, 95 percent of the time, it seems like the officers are let off with nothing more than a stern talking to uh, that the department's own investigatory team determines that the officer in question uh, was operating by the book. And so, therefore, it's A-OK. And not only are they let off, but in many cases, they're actually given promotions. They're actually given, you know, awards and bonuses and things like that. Uh, later on, they're given literal pat on the pats on the back. There, of course, have been, you know, incidents where the police have actually been filmed, uh, like the classic one out of Miami where they shot up the attorney who was just happened to come through a protest. She grabbed a sign. Those got were involved. rubber bullets. That's correct. They shot her up, though, and uh, it was not a comfortable thing for that lady to endure that. I don't think anyone would want to get shot by multiple rubber bullets, especially in the center of the forehead, uh, which is one of the places where this lady got shot. To have the police then laugh about it later on was uh, particularly callous, and there's just no shortage of examples of this. So why did this officer in Buffalo actually get fired? Because it wasn't about sex. No, and, it was about the use of force on a suspect. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But it wasn't that. about the officer using force on a suspect. Oh, it was about an officer using force on a suspect, yes. But not the officer who got fired. No, this officer uh, actually tried to stop the use of force that was being uh, uh, used on a handcuffed, arrested suspect. And uh, she, you know, grabbed the arm of the other officer, and that officer turned around and clocked her. Do you have the story, Mark? Yep, coming from vice.com. In Buffalo, New York, a former police officer is fighting to get her pension after being fired from the city's police department for interfering with another officer she claims was abusing an arrest suspect. Uh, Her name's Carol Horn, was fired from the force in 2006, it's been some time, Mm -hmm. and charged with obstructing another cop during an arrest over a domestic dispute. Now, I've only seen a couple of instances where police will, you know, Act on other police to stop the abuse of a suspect. Right. Um, I've it's very seen, rare. Actually, I've seen, I can think of one other story, and that lady got fired too. Mm. So, um, anyway, Horn claims that the fellow Buffalo officer, Greg 
Kowatsky uh, was abusing a suspect who has already been placed under arrest in handcuffs. He was handcuffed in front of the, um, and he was sideways in the front, and he was sideways being punched in the face by Gregory Kowatsky, explained Horn when she, uh, she said she intervened when she saw Kowatsky being, begin to choke the man. Oh my God. I'm so- like, Greg, you're choking him. Because he thought whatever happened in the house, he was still upset about, so he didn't want to stop choking him. Um, I just grabbed his arm from around uh, Neil Mack's neck, she uh, said. And so, so this was a situation where the suspect had been taken out of the house. Like right. he, beat it, he beat the suspect up pretty good in the house, and then they, the, a, a team of police officers show up. They drag the guy out. He's arrested. The other officer, according to this lady, is going bat s insane because he's all hyped up on adrenaline, adrenaline or whatever. Sure. Whatever, and uh, you know the the object of his ire is this guy, and he begins to choke him. Oh my gosh! She and re- he's in handcuffs. This is after he's already beating on him while he was in handcuffs. Now, so the difficulty here is is that you want to remain objective in every circumstance. You don't want to. I'm, I'm talking about the uh, the audience. You you never remain objective when it comes to cops. But I want to <laughs> remain objective, and I know the audience wants to remain objective. And often in our culture, we tend to give the police the benefit of the doubt. So my question to you is, if you're going to give the police the benefit of the doubt, which police officer do you give the benefit of the doubt to? Oh. Who's telling a lie here? Hmm. Right? Yeah, that's so, a good point. Actually, we don't have Kowatsky uh, denying what happened. Uh, mm. The only the only thing that uh, he denies is the he certainly could the have. city story. <laughs> yeah, he certainly could deny. I mean, as long as there's no dash cam or officer cam to there's ten other the officers claim. there. Mm. So you know, at this point, the thin blue line. What does it do exactly? Well, I can tell you, this lady's fired and she gets no pension. So does that now, mean the wh- other officers took his side of the I story? I don't have all the specifics on that that right. part of the story. I you know, I mean I've got the I've got what I got on the, the, this story and there's not a lot it didn't get a lot of a media attention. Sure. So um, you know, that what can I tell you? Now it's getting um, media attention. Well, at least from Vice and Vice does awesome work, but there was a local uh News Seven or something that did okay. something too. Yeah, ABC Seven. I see that. Yep. So anyway, Kowatsky says that uh, Horn never got on top of him, uh, meaning that uh, the the, the uh, city had uh, claimed that she had uh, jumped on Officer Kowatsky's back and struck him with her hands um, mm. over this. And you know, at this point, everybody but the city is saying that didn't happen. So um, anyway, she's going on. It's, uh, ABC noted that Kowatsky later was forced into retirement following two separate instances. This is the guy that punched the fellow officer in the nose after she stopped him from uh, choking a suspect. Okay, so he's fired from the force. This is the reason I asked you to say, hey, if you want to remain objective, which police officer's side are you going to so take? So after she pulls, just to be, make sure I'm clear, after she basically breaks this officer away from the dude that he yep. was attacking, he then rushes her and jacks her in the face. Yeah, he punches her right in the face and broke her nose. That's a professional guy. Yeah. He's really um, and the best th- of the best. After that, uh, now this is, because I know what I would have been like Years ago, before I started doing this story and started reading more and more, uh, you know, articles on police abuse, I know what I would have said is, is that, well, you know, we weren't there. We don't know what happened. Uh, I'm going to take the officer's word on it. Now, of course, I take the officer that uh, <laughs> I don't know whose word I'm going to. Well, t- this officer uh, that that was fired and is now trying to get pension, but she's been denied that. Uh, this officer had a 19-year career. Yeah, she had a 19-year career, year career, and this other guy, he's been fired because of two separate instances, one in which he choked a fellow officer while on the <laughs> clock. Um, wow. And, yeah, and uh, and one in which he punched an officer while off duty. He's also been indicted along with two other officers on charges of federal civil rights violations towards oh, black guy. teen suspects. This guy's a winner. Yeah. So— so let me see if I got this straight. This guy gets fired, which is very unusual. She's been fired, this uh, other officer yep. who was attacked by this crazy uh, officer who apparently was to attack anybody that comes within six feet of him. And she's still not qualifying for her pension. They they, they didn't, they well, didn't they, say, hey, we made a mistake. We thought this other guy was okay, and turns out he was bad. Look, lady, we're sorry. We'll bring him back. Nope. No, that's not happening. So that's really the long and the short of it is, is that I believe not only that certainly everybody's going to say some police officers abuse their power. There's nobody who's going to say that some police officers don't abuse their power. She police probably officers did too. Are human. They everybody understands that. Um, but the, the the what we have here is we have a systemic problem with police officers 
policing other police officers. This is what happens. It's what's happened in, so far, 100% of the stories I've read on uh, this kind of thing, where an officer attempts to police another officer. I don't know. I'm like, the, the, the good stories, maybe they don't make the news. I don't know. But it, I, I think we've got a real problem here. All right, there's more coming up. 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733. Which officer do you believe uh, in this particular case? You can also bring up anything that's on your mind. It's Free Talk Live's live Saturday edition. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. I wish you would have answered the question as, as to what's the age range. I mean, if two 10-year-old boys are playing doctor with each other, and, and he was specific that he said it was okay for a boy and a girl to play doctor, which did happen to me when I was that age, but I was two, maybe two and a half, three years older than that girl. Am I a molester? She was the one trying to take my pants off. <laughs> <laughs> Should she go to jail? You know, people like Lou, they get all upset over things like this when they're not even apprised of the facts. And you try to tell them the facts, and they just, it, since it doesn't fit with their worldview, right. it doesn't fit with their core belief system, it's just, it can't be possibly true that I could right. have possibly have known what I was Ch- doing. At that children age. who are engaged in sex um, with, a, with somebody who's older are being uh, ma- manipulated. That's one of them. Um, and, you know, sometimes that's, you, you know, sometimes that's true. Absolutely. There's and no doubt. And sometimes it's not. Free Talk Live. Set nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. 
This is Free Talk Live. You can take control toll-free here. The live Saturday edition. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And don't forget to join us online at freetalklive.com. If you're looking to get gold or silver, you can go to gold.freetalklive.com. People want gold and silver for a variety of different uh, reasons. As a matter of fact, silver is priced very well right now. And I think that it's probably going to move up in the future. That's my opinion. You need to figure it out on your own. Do your research. But, um, you know, whether it's a hedge against inflation or an investment or barter currency, we, you can go get your gold and silver at gold.freetalklive.com. We've teamed up with Midas Resources, one of the big names in the gold industry. Midas, as a matter of fact, is the uh, parent company of GCN, the uh, organization that puts us up on the satellite. So they're our syndicate. And I've been doing business with them for more than a decade buying gold and silver, and I've always been pleased with with what's happened. The prices are great. The service is, uh, is, is excellent. You'll get, to, you'll get your metal in your hand, which is important. It's gold.freetalklive.com. I'm going to give you a, a toll-free line in case you want to – you can't get on the Internet or whatever. Gold.freetalklive.com, or you can call 877-857-9938. 877-857-9938. Eight five seven ninety nine thirty eight gold dot freetalklive.com. dot com. All right, so we can uh, of course take your calls about anything. We've got George on the line in New York, or excuse me, in uh, D.C. George, you're on Free Talk Live via Skype. Our Skype username, by the way, is lrn.fm. Should you, the listener, wish to join us, go ahead, George. You're on the air. <laughs> you feeling all right there? Yeah, I was just doing a Chris Cocker impersonation. Anyway, um, yeah, I was no curious. Idea who? About the Chris who? <laughs> Chris Cocker, the guy who goes, leave Britney alone, really. So I was just oh, like, yeah, yeah, I don't know who that is. All right, oh. what's on your mind, man? That I joke failed. <laughs> is it an unacceptable use of force to show, roll up at a police station and throw bacon at a cop, at a bunch of cops? Like, get the... Yes. I saw this video this one lady do on Facebook. Well, I would say as long as you don't actually hit the cops with the bacon. It's, it's still littering. Well, well yeah, it would be littering. But and it's a waste of the, the flesh of something that, that died so that you could have something to eat. Some sort of beast is going to come along and clean that up. I mean, it's not going to take long. <laughs> <laughs> it is bacon exciting. after all. Yeah. Funny to think, she, she, not only did she do that, but she showed her carrying, she put she, with the, the bacon in a Dunkin' Donuts box, a double irony on so that. So who is this? Some YouTuber? She sounds upset, yeah, whoever I, she is. Who is yeah, it? On, on Facebook. Yeah, I saw it. On, and I even shared it on my Facebook profile right there if you want to find it. All but right, yeah, so what happened? Just, I mean, so she rolls up on it, some cops outside of a police station, throws them. No, inside. She walks up, walks up to the desk inside, and she just take, opens the, the box of bacon, and she just takes it out and just starts chucking it at the cops, you know, just tossing it right at the cops. Like, right there, probably as a protest of police brutality or whatnot. Wow. It's a real um footage did not have audio because I would have paid good money just to see. Oh, so it was security. Fo- it was like security footage is what you're yeah. saying. So she so just to be clear, this lady went in on her own volition. She didn't have a team of supporters with her. She was just nope. there. She was just there alone throwing bacon at the police in their reception area. Yep. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> I, when she ran out, that's when the two cops walked, walked up behind her, gra- grabbed her and just cuffed her and, uh, and just walked her to the lockup area like that. Like, I mean, it doesn't look like it was really hard, but yeah, it's just like it was just slaps of bacon. Yeah, you <laughs> know, it's going to depend on how thing. It's going to depend on the cops as far as how that goes, right? Because some cops, they can take a joke and a clear, and maybe she wasn't, uh, maybe she wasn't really coming at it like it was a joke. Maybe she was like screaming or something like that and just being yeah, generally yeah. awful. Um, yeah, it but, sounded like she was talking a whole lot of smack. It looked like from the yeah. video. Of what- so I guess it just depends, right? So like, there's a guy, there's a comedian out there on YouTube, one of the YouTube pranksters. Uh, his name is Tom Mabe, and he's actually uh, like put a donut on a fishing pole, oh, God. and you know, it was like on a second story above a police. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Tom Mabe, did you um y- y- y'all heard that one where um telemarketer called his house and he pretended to be a detector? Yeah, and, that's and, old. And that's old Tom Mabe. That's like kind of what he made his his uh, his money on back in the day. He's been around for a long time, and so he puts the uh, the donut on a, a fishing line and then kind of dangles it down. And I think it was like the Louisville Police Department, and those guys thought it was funny. So you know, it just all depends. Maybe if you'd thrown the right. Generally, police officers are the uh, in you know to, to, in my world they can take a good cop joke as much as the yeah. uh, uh, as anyone. And so you know if you're funny, you're funny. If you're tossing raw bacon and sausage at people, I'm not so <laughs> sure that that's funny. I think that that uh, um, 
you know, I mean, I don't think it's okay <laughs> to throw rocks towards somebody even if you don't hit them. The bacon Therefore, thing. I don't think it's okay to throw bacon at somebody even if you don't hit them. Uh, the, but the bacon, at the very least, like, you know, there's different, I think there's different factors you have to p- put into play here. One, uh, is the bacon actually hot? Like, did you just take it out of the oven? Is it boiling Unlikely. with grease? It, Probably. I, un- I doubt it. If you handled it with a bare hand, so right. I doubt so, it. I mean, if, it, if, you had, bacon. if you'd thrown, like, bacon that was just so hot. It was hot, raw, actually. It had a raw bacon. Okay. This is raw bacon and raw sausage, as I understood the story. So it's going to make a I mess. When I posted it on freetalklive.com like a month ago. Yeah, you, if you're inside a building, it's going to make a mess. Somebody's going to have to clean that up. If you throw it outside of a building, some beast is going to come along and going to yeah, eat it. It's not a problem. I don't want I don't want somebody to be able to throw a whole bunch of sausage in my front lawn, okay? <laughs> it's still littering whether or not some beast comes along That's and cleans true. it up. How, how, Just how how I need some, fat dogs lying bacon? around. Sorry, what, George? How about Tyson? If you have a motorcycle, how about Tyson bacon and, and sausage to, the, to some string to the back of the motorcycle and you're just driving around the police station going, here, Biggie, come and get it. Thanks for the call That's tonight, George. I appreciate it. You know, Somebody that with way me. too much time is what that is. That reminds me of the uh, the Dudesons. These are another uh, group of pranksters on YouTube. I do enjoy the YouTube pranksters a lot. I, I am offended by some of them are anybody pretty, who does pranking for a liver, living. But come on, some of this stuff is good. So how about this one? So he talked about tying something uh, to the back of a car. The the Dudesons in one episode, uh, one of them's got a wedding dress on, and he's a guy. And so he has a bunch of the cans on strings yeah. and goes up behind a police van, attaches the cans on strings to the bumper of the police van, and then when the cops pull away, he starts running after the police van. You know, like the wife left behind by somebody, yeah. one of those things. And it was hilarious. I that mean, sounds pretty funny. That's funny stuff, messing with the cops like that. And then, of course, uh, another classic one is the bong prank. On police, that's the on the Roman Atwood channel. That one's is that hilarious. tobacco instead of yeah. marijuana. Yeah, yeah, they're walking around with a t- uh, with a huge bong like you would see <laughs> marijuana smokers use, and just taking bong rips. Well, they, with that's tobacco. what they're supposed to be for, right? They sell <laughs> yeah. them as tobacco pipes. I, mean, I don't know that I've ever and seen. And of course, the smoke. cops are just walking up and snatching it out of their hands <laughs> and being really rude. Anyway, let's go to Sean. He's in England. You're on Free Talk Live, Sean. Hey, thanks for having me on. My name's Sean Atwood. Hey, Sean. My story, my story was featured on Locked Up Abroad on National Geographic Channel. Oh, so you've been locked up. Yes, I ended up serving just under six years in Arizona. Started oh. out in Sheriff Joe Arpaio's jail. Oh, my gosh. What for? Uh, um, I went to America as a young person, made a couple of million in the, in the stock market, living that Wolf of Wall Street lifestyle, but I started an ecstasy ring, Ooh. which was that which was actually in competition with Sammy the Bull Gravano's ecstasy ring. And then May 16, 2002, SWAT team smashed my door down, and I ended up in that jail. Let's talk more about that, Sean. That's, uh, that sounds like an interesting story, because you're talking about one of the, uh, the most feared sheriffs in America, Joe Arpaio. Stand by. I'd love to bring you back to continue this discussion. He is, of course, notorious uh, for having jail conditions that are absolutely horrifying and inhumane uh we can talk more about those conditions here in a moment it sounds like sean has experienced them firsthand so we'll get back to him and his story in prison for six years in the united states for allegedly running an ecstasy ring sounds like he actually did do that we'll talk more to sean fascinating story so far 855 450 free you can bring up whatever's on your mind here tonight it is the live saturday edition of free talk live this is dan pillett do you owe the irs money you can't pay are tax debts crippling you I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. 
walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 hey, whoa. Hey, 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 who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this costume. No, I have work today. This is, you ain't gonna make, wait, no, now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You'll be in third. What is this? You'll be in third. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Are you drinking too much and it's destroying your life? If you're ready to quit drinking, we have a real solution for you that can help you quit drinking within hours. That's right. We can help you quit drinking within hours. It's not magic. It's medical science. At Sober Time, we'll show you how this simple 20-minute outpatient medical procedure will turn off your cravings within hours. Let's face it. If you don't crave a drink, you're not going to drink. And if you don't drink, you won't get drunk. The medication is FDA approved and covered by most major insurance plans. So if you're really ready to stop drinking and get your life back, call Sober Time now for a free consultation. Patients have nearly an 85% success rate. So here's the number. Call right now. 800-659-0267. 800-659-0267. 800-659-0267. 800-659-0267. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition of the program. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We started out talking about a police officer who's actually been fired for trying to stop another officer from unnecessarily beating a suspect, who was already handcuffed, by the way. Um, in fact, choking that suspect. That's what the, the first officer intervened in that situation. And officer number two uh, ended up punching that first officer in the face, and the first officer was fired and is now um, being denied pension. So you can talk about the corrupt police or whatever's on your mind here tonight. We've actually got Sean on the line with us in England calling from across the pond. Uh, Sean, you're back on Free Talk Live. Now, you said you were featured on a National Geographic documentary. What was it called? Yeah, Locked Up Abroad, Raving Arizona. It's on YouTube if anyone wants to watch it. Now, okay, so what inspired you to call Free Talk Live tonight? I'm just curious. Yeah, one of your big fans, Zachary Wynn, he's been on to me for several months now asking me to call in. So here I am. Oh, okay, cool. So you're out of prison. Let me just recap what you've told us before, just in the last uh, segment there. You said you were over in the United States uh, living the Wall Street life. You started an ecstasy ring and we're competing with uh, Sammy the Wool Gravano, I think you said, and ultimately were busted, thrown in prison in Arizona in Joe Arpaio's jail, which is notorious for being a terrible uh, experience. At what point in that story do you want to pick up with what you were telling us? What happened was I was disgusted by all the human rights violations, guards murdering the prisoners, dead rats in the food, cockroaches crawling all over us at night. 
So I started. How to have often? My hold right. on, hold on. Before you go on, how often? First of all, how long were you in Joe Arpaio's jail, and how often did inmates turn up dead suspiciously? I I, I was unsentenced for 26 months, so I got a good understanding of all the levels of Sheriff Joe Arpaio's jail. My Locked Up Abroad episode, National Geographic researched the amount of deaths, and 62 people died over five years while I was there. It was more deaths than all the jails and prisons That's combined. like one person a month. Yeah. That's a yeah, lot of people. It, yeah, that's a lot for a jail, even the size of the city of uh, Phoenix. It's got the highest rate of death out of all the jails and prisons in America, Sheriff Joe Arpaio's jail facility. That has to be, that, that has to be just coincidence. <laughs> so you get put in this jail and, and go ahead with your story. My writing was smuggled out. It got put on the internet as a blog, John's Jail Journal, and it went on to That sounds familiar. Yeah, we read that. I think we've read that in the past. Maybe, yeah, because it went on to attract a lot of media attention to the jail. But it's, it's, you know, it's all completely gang controlled. As soon as you go in, it's racial gangs, mm -hmm. whites, blacks, Mexicans, Mexican-Americans. Because I'm white, as soon as I went in, Aryan Brotherhood prison gang come up to you. First thing, they ask you what your charges are. Some charges are KOS, kill on sight, like pedophile stuff. Mm. Drive-by shootings, they'll beat you up because women and kids sometimes get hit. Then once you've got past that interrogation, you have to meet the head of the gang, explains all the rules you must follow or else the whole gang will smash you. If someone calls you a punk, a bitch, or hits you, you must fight them on the spot. Can't, you must take showers. Just a quick reminder. I, I just I don't know if you realize this, but Free Talk Live is a uh, radio show. You, saying what you've said so far is totally fine, but I know that in prison, the, you know, the prison world, uh, the f bomb and the s bomb can be dropped fairly often. I just want to caution you against using those words as you describe your experience. Uh, so anyway, go, go ahead uh, with with your story. So the initiation. Yeah, you, must, you must take showers, or they'll smash you for bad hygiene. Can't go make your friends with the guards. They'll smash you for snitching. Can't go sit at the tables with the other races. So, basically, the gangs, under every head, there's guys called torpedoes. They'll go in and smash someone, no questions asked, just so they can earn their reputation and their tattoos. To be a full member of the Aryan Brotherhood prison gang, to get the warbird, the neo-Nazi tattoo, you've got to murder someone in the jail for them. Oh, my gosh. Now, yeah, uh, we're actually, you actually happen to be calling a show where one of the co-hosts, Mark, uh, sitting across from me, was in prison in Florida for a number of years. And, Mark, you were in back in the 1990s. Uh, Sean, when were you in your mid-aughts, mid right, within the last decade or so? May 16, 2002 was when the SWAT team smashed my door down. I was okay. released in December 2007. Yeah, what you're relaying um, does it sounds like some programs I've seen on television uh, about sort of gangs and uh, California prisons and that kind of thing. Nothing like what you're talking about occurred in, in your experience. The, the Florida prisons in my time. No. So you yeah, everybody, everybody's experience is different. Sure. And Joe Arpaio's jail is one of the worst. And, and the worse the jail, the more likely I think you're going to see. The worse the system, the more likely you're going to see the, these, you know, these gang activities. I mean, that there was nothing like that in the, you know, in the jail I've been in. But then again, most of the guys there were white because it's in New Hampshire. Um, anyway, go ahead, uh, Sean. So tell me more about your experience. Do you, you're given these rules and these initiations or whatever, and they told you, look, you either do this or we're going to hurt you. Um, so you didn't have the option of not joining the Aryan Brotherhood. Well, I didn't join because to join, you've got to beat people up to become a member. Okay. So I had, to, I had to play along with it. For example, they'd have like what's called a white boy meeting. If the head of the gang had been moved out the pod, then they'd have to vote on getting another head in, stuff like that. So you learn to play along with the rules so you don't get smashed. But what was even more frightening so was— So you didn't—hold on, just to clarify. You didn't actually join because you didn't want to go and hurt somebody uh, to get into the gang. So what was the relationship then? What were, what were you considered in relation to the gang? Well, I'm not, I'm not a big, tough guy. I'm just a skinny, right. um, nerdy biz business graduate from the UK. So I was trying to mind my own business, just stay in my cell reading and writing. But whatever race you are, you come under control like, of that gang. So if, if you're black, it's the Mau Mau's. If you're Mexican, it's the Mexican Mafia, white Aryan Brotherhood, etc. So over time, you, you, know, you learn to play along with the rules so you don't get smashed. But essentially, this is like citizenship, Ian. Mm -hmm. You're born in a country. That yep. country claims you <laughs> because you were born in that <laughs> geographic area. Did you have to pay you... tribute to these guys? Did what? Sorry. Did you have to pay tribute in some way to these guys? No, no. No I chips. Because... <laughs> so it's just like you give don't them a cross... bag of crisps. Just like you don't cross no. them. Like they would. It's, no. it... 
<laughs> so so the rules no, didn't apply to so the rules applied to you even though you weren't in the gang in that if they saw you talking with the black gang members then that would you know there'd be some sort of punishment to mete out to you yeah absolutely in the beginning you're so scared you just go along with it over time i learned to play around the rules but in the beginning you know you do what they say otherwise <laughs> I had to get used to the sounds of heads getting bashed against toilets, bodies oh getting God. thrown around, people getting carried out on stretchers. But I was lucky because over 100 people were arrested with me in SWAT team raids. Some of those guys were my bouncers from the rave parties I was throwing, mm -hmm. including my best mate, Wild Man. He's from my hometown. He's, he's twice my size. So they were protecting me as, when I went in. When I got separated from my co-defendants, I started to write the life story of a guy called Two Tonys. He was a mafia mass murderer who left the dead bodies of rival gangsters from Arizona to Alaska, and he was serving 115 years. So once I was under his wing, he protected me then. Wow. All right. So you're in uh, prison with uh, the Joe Arpaio jail. You were there for two years awaiting, uh, awaiting a trial or awaiting sentencing or what? You were in there for, what, two years, you said, before you went to a prison? Yeah, I I was, I was on remand before I went over to the prison system, but perhaps the most shocking part of it was the guards that were murdering the prisoners. And, you know, people can look this stuff up on the internet. Brian Crenshaw, he was classified as a partially blind shoplifter, failed to produce his ID for the evening meal. The guards pulverized him, broke his neck, severe internal injuries. He went into a coma and he died over a month later. Jesus. Scott, Nor Scott Norberg was a mentally ill man wandering a neighborhood. They brought him in. Guards started beating him and electrocuting him with taser guns. Female guard tried to stop it. Stop beating him. His face has turned blue. He pushed her off, kept beating him. Inmates watching out the holding oh, cell started yelling, why are you still beating him? He's already dead. And even after that, they continued to beat the corpse, turn blue and everything. Both of those cases were caught on camera. Family members of the victim sued the jail and were awarded compensation. Sheriff Joe Arpaio... Do you have any idea what he did to some of the guards that were found responsible? In Promotion. Yep, exactly. Promotions and pay rises. Now, there are a lot of people, Incredible. a lot of people in the United States that revere Joe Arpaio mm. for his uh, his tough-on-crime attitude. What do you think, what do you say to those people? Hold that thought, Sean. Can you stick with us and talk further about this? Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's talk more about his opinion about Joe Arpaio. Here in Moments... We're on with Sean. He's calling all the way from London tonight, so stayed up late to call Free Talk Live. It's past midnight there. 855-450 free, the live Saturday edition. Maybe you've got a question for Sean. He might be willing to take your calls. Uh, coming up here, 855-450 free, Free Talk Live. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Lose the winter blues and warm up with hot flooring deals from Lumber Liquidators. Thinking about hardwood? Consider bamboo. We've got the number one brand and we'll help you get it for less. Like Strand Bamboo. It's twice as hard as oak and for a limited time, it's only $1.99. Why pay as much as $4.99 for bamboo at other stores? We've got deals in over 70 styles from an incredible $1.79. Plus, pre-finished hardwood, laminate, and more for less than half what you'll pay somewhere else. And 18-month special financing. Now is the time to warm up your home with new floors. So visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. We've been patiently waiting. Waiting while you tried to ignore us. Waiting while you acted like we didn't exist. Waiting for our chance to be taken seriously. The wait is over. GCN is available 24-7 at GCNlive.com. Navigate through news from your favorite hosts and download archives of past shows. Download the app on your smartphone or tablet or visit GCNlive.com for instant access and live streaming. GCNlive.com, the future of talk radio. Now at your fingertips. Worried about getting sick and feeling terrible for days or even weeks? You need Immudine for a healthy immune system. Why get sick and bother with products that just don't work? For just a dollar a day, Immudine is all natural and safe for all lifestyles. Call 866-257-8668 to buy now before it's too late, before you get sick. Or go to immudyne.com, immudine.com, or call 866-257-8668.
Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you may bring up anything you'd like. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, live Saturday edition we will continue here in moments with Sean calling from England, where he's talking about his experience in jail. He was in Joe Arpaio's jail, which is notorious for being one of the worst. But some people love this guy. They love Joe Arpaio. They think he's just doing a great job and he's helping stop crime. And that tough on crime attitude of his is the way to go, say some folks. We're going to get Sean's response to that here in a moment. You can get a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. It's not just any old coffee. It's shade-grown, 100% uh, organic, and top 1% great Arabica beans. This is far superior to the coffee that you're normally drinking, whether you're getting it from one of the little um, you know, coffee fast food places or whether you're getting it at the store. This is delicious shade-grown coffee. You're really going to enjoy it. But you can get high-end coffee on the Internet. It's not a really a big surprise. But can you get a free pound and can you help people in the process? Because what BuzzBox does, that's the company we're working with here, is they give us back some of the profits so that we can give people around the world microloans through Kiva.org. So not only are you upgrading your coffee experience, taking care of the sort of coffee shopping issues that you have now, you're also helping people in the process. Please, go get a free pound at coffee.freetalklive.com. Sign up for the subscription. You can cancel it any time. You pay the shipping on the pound, you'll get the free pound. Coffee.freetalklive.com. So I don't know when it was that we read this uh, John's Jail Journal um, but I'm certain. But I know it's alliterative. Yeah, I'm certain that we had uh, had read this, and now seeing Sean's photos, it looks even more familiar. Sean Atwood is with us here. Just happened to call in tonight. One of his, uh, I guess, a mutual friend or somebody who listens to Free Talk Live and knows Sean, encouraged him to call the show. And Sean, I appreciate you doing that. You happen to find a good time to call in on a Saturday night. Normally we're wall to wall uh, with callers, but you were able to get in pretty pretty fast because you called early on tonight. So you were in Joe Arpaio's jail there in Phoenix, Arizona, notorious for being one of the worst. Uh, and I remember from some of the blogs that you wrote, uh, it certainly sounded like a harrowing experience. You were just explaining to us the um, the gang members and you know what life was like with them, but also the uh, the guards murdering people in the jail. You kind of went through a little bit of that. But Mark, you had a question for Sean. Can you kind of recap that real quick? Sure. Um, my, my question was is that there are a lot of people uh, that revere Joe Arpaio and his tough on crime, uh, you know, attitude. His this 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 thing he sold. Uh, he's known as America's 
toughest sheriff. Yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, having spent some time in prison, I'm by no means a liberal. I'm an elected Republican, right? Um, I, I kind of understand both sides of this. I think it's kind of silly to take bad people, put them in a bad place, treat them badly, and then expect them to get out and act good. Like, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But a lot to, that does make a lot of sense to other people. What do you think? I totally understand where the Tough on Crime Brigade are coming from, because I was like that when I was younger. I thought prisons were full of serial killers, child rapists, lock them up and throw away the key. But once I got in there and saw it was 90% nonviolent, mostly drug addicts. Wow, 90%. I, I, saw all these, I saw all these industries just making money off the backs of these people, a lot of them state raised, a lot of them mentally ill, a lot of them um, veterans from the wars that returned home. Yeah. I, I come to a different understanding of what was going on. If you treat people like animals, they're going to get out and they're going to behave like animals. People were getting arrested, for, say, for weed, ecstasy, coming in, clicking up with the gangs, shooting up heroin and crystal meth, yeah. getting neo-Nazi tattoos. And it's, it's almost by design because it's, each prisoner is $50,000 a year of taxpayers' money per prisoner. Yep. That's how much these jails and prisons get. So human beings Within- just turn into... Within within four months of getting to uh, state prison, I had learned how in the auto mechanics class to hotwire a car. <laughs> exactly, it's a college of crime. Tell me something. You said you were so you were making these journals, uh, journal posts. And by the way, your blog is still up, johnsjailjournal.blogspot.com. And I remember we were reading about this T-bone uh, guy that you knew. Uh, and so, anyway, how did you get those journal posts out? I know you mentioned before, but what was the the method for that? Okay. I was in maximum security in my second year unsentenced, and my aunt would come and visit me on the weekends. Now, I couldn't hand what I wrote to her because in maximum security, she's behind a big plexiglass window. Sure. I've got one hand chained down, and I've got the other hand on a phone. So what I did was I was allowed Jeez. to release to her property items such as old mail, books, ah. you know, legal paperwork, and I hid what I wrote in those documents. And now I would, I would take them to the visitation officer. The first time I did it, my heart's going like crazy. Mm. But I know they searched for everything, but he's looking through it and he's looking for contraband, drugs, sure. syringes, cash. It's going under his radar. And then at the end of the visit, he handed that stuff to my aunt and she took it out and then they put it on as John's Jail Journal so people wouldn't know it was in my name. Sure. Nice. Sure, they wouldn't say Sean Atwood's jail journal because that would get uh, you, you a good old beatdown. You might end up dead yeah. uh, as a result oh, of that. Cellmate. I like guess a cellmate that was a rapist or something like that. Right. So it was it one entry that you managed to smuggle out or several? How many did you end up releasing? No, um, a lot got smuggled out. It was it was towards the tail end of my stay at the jail, and that was about my, my last three months on remand. Once I moved over to the prison system, we felt comparatively safer because the guards weren't routinely murdering the prisoners like they were in our Pio's yeah. place. In was fact, this Arizona prison or federal prison? State Arizona. Okay. Arizona Department of Corrections. Each each unit was actually named after a guard who'd been murdered by the prisoners. Oh wow! Yeah, I'd never been any place where a guard had been murdered by prisoners. It's wow. just not the experience I had. But, but what you're saying is, moving from Joe Arpaio's jail to the Arizona prison system was like an increase in safety. You felt better about that? Absolutely, increase in everything. People will sign plea bargains. Ninety eight percent of um, unsentenced prisoners sign plea bargains just so they can get over to the prison system and get out of Arpaio's hellhole. Wow. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I mean, those are, those numbers you're talking are pretty pretty similar to across the country. It's 97% of arrests result in a plea bargain, um, and uh, far, it's far fewer than 1% actually take it to trial. The only people that go to trial are people who consider themselves to be uh, innocent and those that uh, have you know nothing to lose. They've got facing you know 15 life sentences or something. So you mentioned guys in jail, in Arpaio's jail, were, were doing uh, crack or methamphetamine or whatever it was? Heroin? There's more drugs, more drugs in the jail than anywhere on the face of the How'd they get in? Um, Guard was arrested bringing him in. Nurse was arrested bringing him in for the Mexican Mafia. But most commonly was people smuggling them in in minimum and medium security visit where you sat at a table with the prisoner. Huh. They wrap them in cellophane, bring a baby. Babies, the, the drugs will be in the baby's diaper. Mm -hmm. Prisoners distract the guards. The package is passed under the table, and the prisoner shoves them in his behind. Yep. Yep. Now, you're, you're, you're strip searched all the time in prison. If you're a guy... Sure. Completely naked in front of the guard. He stood a few feet in front of you. He looks in your mouth, armpits. 
Um, you have to raise your man parts, turn around, bend over, cough. spread your buttocks and cough. Yep, yeah. So those, those guys <laughs> bringing the packages in, they pride themselves on how many packages they can store inside themselves. <laughs> it's about them picking out during these trip searches. <laughs> oh man! Yep, it's called There's suitcasing. All... <laughs> I actually uh, knew a, I knew a guy who could uh, vomit on demand. You know, like uh. it, it would take him it'd take him a good minute to do it, but he could vomit on demand. There's no way, no doubt, he could do it. And he would just swallow things uh, and then vomit them up a little while later. Wow. I imagine he was highly paid for his services. Actually, the numbers you're talking about, like more drugs in prison than on the streets or anything like that, that wasn't the case um, you know, where I was. It, was. it was coming in, but the supply was relatively low. The fact is is that you know, at the time, I think it was probably a gram for 10 bucks on the streets. It was a, uh, a tenth of a gram for 10 bucks in, in prison. Yeah. I mean, he could barely... Uh, and this is just marijuana, and mostly that's what I saw. I saw some other things, but uh, they were they they were rare occurrences. Tell me, Sean, did you ever hear any rumors? You know, obviously when you're in jail, there's all kinds of stories running around, and you never really know what's true. But did you ever hear any rumors about Joe Arpaio that you found plausible from the other prisoners? Well, I'm in touch with a lady whose brother was actually set up by Arpaio. He was a mentally ill prisoner. He got released. Arpaio's crew had bomb parts, and they coaxed this guy into doing a deal where he was going to bomb Sheriff Joe Arpaio. Oh. Arpaio had the, had the restaurant completely surrounded with police, and then beyond them were the media. So they arrest this guy. It's all over the news. The it's bomb a, it's a reality guy. TV program. On the internet. Yeah, yeah. And this guy, he's on remand for three or four years on sentence, facing 25 to life, trying to blow up the sheriff. Man. It went to trial, and the jury. Uh, found him innocent. Not only that, though, they they said it was a blatant publicity stunt by Sheriff Joe Arpaio's oh office. Oh, my goodness. Wow, what a story. And and there's no shortage yeah. of these things, I imagine. I mean, this guy is so crazy. I um, The story I heard about Joe Arpaio was that he was the biggest drug dealer in uh, Maricopa County and that ultimately, you know, if you do drug dealing in that area, you got to be one of his approved dealers or else, you know, he's going to come after you. What do you think about that one? Well, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, if you look at the highest levels of drug dealing, the governments are always involved, aren't they? Queen, Queen Victoria was the biggest drug dealer in the world with the opium wars. Sean, I guess that's a true statement. Great call. Uh, you've got a website, I take it. Is it Sean Atwood with two T's dot com? Sean Atwood? Oh, my blog is John's Jail Journal as well. Perfect. John's Jail Journal dot com. Thanks for calling in tonight and telling your story. I do appreciate it. There's more on the way here on the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalk live.com and amazon will send us a portion of your purchase you're going to do the shopping anyway so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com that's shop.freetalklive.com majid lives in nor devin armenia with his wife kids and grandkids all in the same house they have cows but to compete against the big ranchers majid needed to get a loan for more cattle free talk live helped him get a loan for the cows he bought them and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, January 24th, 2015. Silver is trading at $18.37 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,295 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $237. Antiwar.com reports a day after Yemeni President Hadi, his entire cabinet, and the Prime Minister resigned, calm prevailed over the Yemeni capital of Sana'a, even as international officials warned of a power vacuum. Houthi rebels maintain effective control over the capital and indeed much of the nation, and while some of the officials welcomed Hadi's resignation, the group itself took no official position. Hadi and the other officials were in talks with the Houthis on a power-sharing deal, but clashes erupted when the talks stalled, leading Hadi supporters to claim a coup was being carried out. Yemen's parliament, such as it is, rejected Hadi's resignation and held emergency meetings on trying to resolve the situation. So far, they've not managed to resolve anything, however, and Hadi's return seems unlikely. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the Supreme Court on Friday agreed to review Oklahoma's controversial method of execution by lethal injection, taking up a case brought by three death row inmates who accused the state of violating the U.S. Constitution's ban on cruel and unusual punishment. The high court just last week allowed the execution of a convicted killer in Oklahoma over the objection of its four liberal members. The three-drug process used by Oklahoma prison officials has been under scrutiny since the April 2014 botched execution of convicted murderer Clayton Lockett. He could be seen twisting on the gurney after death chamber officials failed to properly place an IV. The inmates challenged the state's procedures, arguing the sedative used by Oklahoma, Minazolom, cannot achieve the level of unconsciousness required for surgery, making it unsuitable for executions. The case draws fresh attention to the ongoing debate over whether the death penalty should continue in the United States at a time when most developed countries have abandoned it. The Death Penalty Information Center, which compiles executions statistics says only seven of the 32 states that still have the death penalty on the books executed inmates in 2014 with most coming in just three states texas missouri and florida the group also says that the number of executed inmates has hit a 20-year low the Supreme Court case directly affects only Oklahoma, but Florida uses a similar protocol so death row inmates there may seek stays based on the pending case. On January 15th, the High Court on a 5-4 to four vote declined to halt Oklahoma's execution of Charles Warner. Although five votes are needed to grant a stay application, only four are required for the court to take up a case. The inmates say Oklahoma's three-drug protocol can cause extreme pain, violating the Constitution's Eighth Amendment prohibition on cruel and unusual punishment. In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit tour.fppradio.com. That's T-O-U-R dot fppradio.com. UPI reports a federal judge on Friday ruled Alabama's ban on same-sex marriage is unconstitutional. U.S. District Judge Jenny Grenade struck down the Alabama Marriage Protection Act and an amendment that put it on the state's constitution in a lawsuit brought by two women, Carrie Searcy and Kim McKeon. They sought to have their out-of-state marriage recognized in Alabama so they would both be considered the legal parents of their eight-year-old child. The two were married in 2008 in California and have lived in 
Alabama since 2011. Grenad said the act was unconstitutional because it violated the Equal Protection and Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. The ruling makes Alabama the 37th state, including Washington, D.C., to recognize same-sex marriage. Attorney General Spokesman Mike Lewis said via email, We are disappointed and are reviewing the federal district court's decision. We expect to ask for a stay of the court's judgment pending the outcome of the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling, which will ultimately decide this case. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Shoppers at a Hannaford supermarket could only speculate that the middle-aged woman angrily demanding a price check on a pack of rice pudding was once a carefree youth. I don't care what it says on your screen. You know, this is why people go to the store across the street, because of the way they're treated here. You know, nobody likes it here. Those watching the woman angrily asking for a manager over a $1.20 price difference imagined that the woman was once a fresh-faced college graduate, too spirited and fun-loving to throw a bitter tantrum in front of a room of complete strangers. She was probably once just some freewheeling college kid. You know, her biggest concern was which one of her friends she was going to hang out with at night and whether they were going to meet at the movies or a bonfire on the beach. Now look at her. You know, I'll bet if you'd have told her 10 or 15 years ago that one day she'd be ripping into a grocery store clerk with a room full of strangers staring at her, she'd have been horrified. It's sad. In other news, a few years in the military would have really straightened out a troubled teen killed in Afghanistan, and a man on the verge of self realization instead turns to God. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're here on the live Saturday edition. Of course, plenty of time for you to call in. Bring up anything that you want. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. 855-450-3733. And don't forget, we've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Joining you tonight, you've got Ian. And Mark. And over the last few years, we've been covering Venezuela and just... Watching the horrifying uh, situation as it develops over there and just continues to get worse with, at this point now, basic food items becoming very, very hard to find uh, in that country through the legitimate channels, through the superstores or whatever, the uh, the grocers, some of which are actually government-operated. Uh, watching as uh, during the, the Hugo Chavez uh, situation when he was in control and now with his successor, uh, Nicolas Maduro, I believe, is his name, and just continuing to watch this snowball of failure as it just continues. Socialism to, doesn't work under anybody's yeah. tutelage. It doesn't really matter what their name is. To uh, to gather uh, more weight as it rolls down uh, the hill, so to speak. And it just keeps getting worse. Here's a story from Yahoo and Reuters where lob, uh, excuse me, robbers and looters, not lobbers and rooters, uh, are <laughs> targeting trucks carrying food across Venezuela in another sign of worsening shortages that have turned basics like flour and chicken into coveted booty. Crime has long plagued shops and roads in Venezuela, which has one of the world's highest murder rates. But widespread shortages due to restriction of dollars for imports have worsened since the new year. This has made food delivery increasingly risky, even as certain trucks have been fitted with GPS devices and are sometimes protected even by private security agents. Can you imagine? I mean, every food truck traveling from point A to point B. It's got an armored truck going behind it. Has to have uh, guys with guns. Orlando Garcia, he's a 37-year-old driver from the western state of Takria who has been ambushed twice as he crisscrossed the country. He said, quote, I won't transport food anymore because the streets are too dangerous. It's too dangerous to transport food in Venezuela. They put screws on the road to burst your tires, and when you stop to fix the tire, they attack you said Garcia, who now refuses to work past midnight and will transport only plastics. Queues that stretch around blocks are now a common sight throughout the OPEC country. I don't think you were on the show where we talked about this, Mark, uh, but apparently the soldiers and security people at the grocery stores, which are you know government agents in a lot of cases, mm-hmm. are telling people, you can't take pictures. You cannot take pictures of the empty shelves, and you cannot take pictures of the lines that are just sprawling outside, thousands wow. of people long. Obviously, some people have taken pictures anyway, but... You know, Something's you, going horribly wrong there. Yeah. Local media, uh, quote, it hasn't, excuse me, it has become a security problem to bring trucks into big supermarket stores, says Arsenio Manzarenes, who heads the Venezuelan Truckers Union. He says it wasn't a problem before, but now with these queues, people see a truck and they lunge for it. 
Local media have reported several food robberies in Caracas this month, including one by four armed thieves who stole canned tuna, corn flour, and refined sugar. Armed National Guard troops have been deployed to maintain order, they claim, but frustration mounts quickly during hours-long waits under the Caribbean sun. President Nicolas Maduro blames the scarcities on an economic war waged by right-wing foes trying to topple his socialist government. Who else would, would wage war on him? Surely it couldn't be the laws of economics. This week, he announced yet another crackdown on hoarders and yeah. contrabandists who sell price-fixed goods in Colombia for a tidy profit. So... What do you know? Just like in the Soviet Union, where people were waiting in bread lines to try to get scraps, it's the black market that is providing. Now, of course, the black market, unfortunately, comes along with some real criminality, right? Like, it's yeah. not, to my mind, it's not a criminal act It's not in that it's not wrong to sell something on the black market. If you have, in the case in the United States, frequently it's marijuana or some other drug that's sold in the black market. That's not wrong to do. You've got two people consenting to a transaction. It's totally fine. The it's wrong, of course, to rob someone from their uh, their food truck and then take that and then sell it on the black market. But if you could somehow legitimately get an import of, you know, some pallets full of food from somebody on the back of a ship or whatever and and actually pay for it, then I think the people providing the food on the black market are heroes. They're actually helping feed people and keep them alive. Yeah, but when the the state's policies result in food prices and price fixing and, and things like that, when, with their their policies like price price fixing, you're going to see like the that, black market. You, you, well, well, I mean, that's violence anyway. When you that's tell true. somebody what they can sell and can't sell their stuff at, you're not just giving them advice. You're saying, we're going to send in a guy with a gun to drag your butt off to jail, and if you don't want to go, he'll shoot you in front of your family in order to get it done. That's what government is so far throughout human history. We don't have voluntary governments where governments compete for people's business unless mm. you say that you know sort of wealthy people that can move between countries and that kind of thing. But the amount of competition in, for governments at this point hasn't produced what we would call moral states. We have immoral states that use violence and threats of violence to get what they want. Well, yeah, I was, I'm going to say there's never been a moral state. I don't think in the existence of the idea of the state. I mean, the idea of the state generally has violence backing it. So, you know what? I actually misinterpreted what I read here, Mark. I'm going to reread it because I just kind of, it just clicked with me here. So the crackdown is on hoarders and contrabandists who are selling price-fixed goods in Colombia for a tidy profit. So people in Venezuela are getting their hands... Whoever is able to actually right. get them while they're still on the store shelves, they're getting these goods at a price fixed level, meaning that they're not paying what the market rate would be, which would be higher, presumably, because there's a shortage. Just wild inflation. So they're getting these price fixed goods and then smuggling them over the border into Colombia where they're selling them there. And in fact, well, we we're reading about that there's guys doing that with uh, oil and gasoline. This happens with price fixing all the time. This is the problem with price fixing. Somebody comes in and says, it's immoral to sell whatever you fill in the, uh, the the item, whatever it is, in the blank, at the, such an outrageous profit. And uh, we we have to do something about it. Let's let's fix the price. Well, then somebody comes in and says, awesome, this is nice and low. I'll buy a bunch of it. Or I'll get a bunch of people to buy it, and I'll buy it off of them. And then I will sell it someplace where they actually allow uh, you know market-based pricing. And then I will make a bunch of money. I will come back, and I will do it again, there and again, and again. Yep, as long as they don't get caught. And if you grease enough palms, of the border patrol, then it's not going to be a problem to get across the border. Those people have families to feed too. There, I, I, in effect, I'm recalling from the article that we were reading previously. There's a lot of oil going across uh, that border illegally, going into Colombia. And I mean, uh, I don't remember the, the statistics, but it was like a hundred thousand barrels a day or something crazy. I mean, some, something crazy like that. I'm sorry, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but I remember when I saw that number, I was shocked and how much oil was being smuggled across the border to Colombia. So, you know, these these poor people in Venezuela are being hobbled in so many ways by the government there. These price fixes, which are supposed to help the people, are actually resulting in greater, or, I mean, you know, more shortage the, because the price fixed goods are going where they can garner more money on the streets over in Colombia. That's it's what happens. It's crazy. So people are starving as a result uh, or I imagine they're very hungry. I imagine it's They're not tough. lined up for, for no reason yeah. at all. They're not attacking food trucks for no reason at all. Industry <laughs> leaders say the shortages have been exacerbated by the phasing out of night deliveries for security reasons. 
a lack of truck batteries and tires due to the impact of currency controls and poor roads. So it's hard to even keep a truck on the road in Venezuela. <laughs> You can't get a tire for the thing if you pop one of the tires because of one of the uh, you know thug gangs that has scattered nails all about or screws all about the roadway in order to rob your truck. So you know once your truck breaks down because of a pop tire and then gets cleaned out by the uh, the thugs who just pop the tires, then how do you get it out of there? <laughs> you know you That's can't it. even find a tire to replace it with. It's just crazy. The government did not respond uh, respond to a request for comment. Statistics on deliveries are hard to come by, but Manzanares estimates they have dropped by 30%. Despite mounting risks, some truckers are still hitting the road. Driver Jose Alexander Rincon, age 39, says, They've robbed me five times already. I'm nervous. It's more dangerous by the day. But I don't have an alternative. You know, with the state, the, these are basically, when, when the food's controlled by the state, as it is in uh, Venezuela. They and, actually and have ways. government shopping centers there, government grocery stores. Yep. They nationalized them a few years ago. You, uh, I mean, these are state uh, state agents, right? State agents can't protect themselves at this point. That's, uh, you know, pretty miserable. And consider that here in this country, the complaint is about rich people, right? Well, at least the rich people get the food, uh, you know, the rich business owners get the food to the stores. Coming up more on the situation in Venezuela, your calls are certainly welcome here on the live Saturday edition. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Could it happen here? It's Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Majid lives in Nord Devin, Armenia with his wife, kids, and grandkids all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you dial toll free if you want or not. It's up to you. 855-450 free. We've always got interesting things to share with you. Of course, you can share whatever you want with us. We're talking about Venezuela. And there's another story here from the Washington Post about how the government destroyed the economy. It's a fascinating study in the failure of socialism uh, here, and we'll continue that with uh, just a moment. 855-450 freeze the toll-free number. Pro XPN. It's a global virtual private network. Privacy matters these days online, and you've got to take steps to preserve your privacy, to uh, to ensure your privacy, because by default you really don't have privacy online. If you just get online with your whatever internet service provider, they're probably logging the websites you're visiting and likely the search terms that you're entering. You can put a stop to that right now by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. Now, if you're on the road, just hold off till you get to the office <laughs> or, or get home. Uh, but if you are out and about, you're Well, not- there's a link at uh, freetalklive.com if you forget about that. There you go. Too. Proxpn.com slash FTL. If you are out and about, you can even get ProXPN for your Android or I- iPhone or iPad. Uh, you can also grab it for Windows or Macintosh, and Linux users can use ProXPN as well. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. When you're ready to upgrade to their premium account for unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can access, you can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. You want to do that with code FTL50 so you can save 50% on the price of the annual account. That's code FTL50, like Free Talk Live and the number 50. And that brings the price down to around $5 per month. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and use code FTL50 to get a great discount on privacy. That's priceless. And there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, so you really have nothing to lose whatsoever. We're talking about the failure of socialism, and it is just on display for the world to see. Again, you know, it's, it just keeps happening. The problem with because, socialism is sooner or later you run out of other people's money. Well, and also the problem with socialism is that, uh, or one of the, I guess it's not just socialism, but the problem with just kind of the way people are are brought up in a lot of parts of the world is that, you know, the idea is that, well, socialism has failed because it just wasn't implemented correctly. Yeah, but the idea is, is that the the the, mark, the economy can be managed, and the economies can be managed. I'm not claiming that they can't. There's a lot of historical examples of where somebody sort of manages the economy. But the claim is, is, is it more efficient than uh, the, the invisible hand, as it has been called, of the uh, of the market. And no. also, well, no, it's not. I, I think that there's arguments that it is more efficient in circumstances, right? Like you can pop out this historical example or that historical example. But one thing that needs to be always brought in is the moral aspect of it is, is that there has never been a control on an economy that isn't implemented by the state, right? Um, and that when those when those controls come in, they're brought with men with guns. Right? Yes. So um, I think that there's time to use people with guns in order to implement a control on an economy. For instance, if, uh, you know, let's talk about child prostitution. There's a market for this, right? Okay. And I think that it is fine to use people with guns in order to control that economy. However, I think that, um, you know, that you should err on the side of laissez faire, hands off, because that results in just better, better results, more moral results. All right, let's go to your phone calls and thoughts. We've got Don. He's in Indianapolis. We can talk more about what's happening in Venezuela here in a moment. Don, you're on Free Talk Live listening to WIBC. Hey, that's exactly what I was going to point out. I love this station. Um, I never realized that uh, this show existed before tonight. Ah, welcome. (laughs) 
Well, we have yeah. nothing to do with the other shows on the station, and except for the fact that we're still on this, we're on the same station. And WIBC is an awesome station uh, in Indianapolis. It's a big powerhouse. But I don't think there's any other show on the station that's quite like Free Talk Live. Yeah, Free Talk Live is unlike any show that you're going to hear on the radio <laughs> in all likelihood. Um, they uh, they they got a new guy, Tony Cass, in the mor- uh, the morning news. Uh, he's a relatively libertarian. Really? So, yeah. It's okay. Pretty- Oh, good that's stuff. good to know. Yeah. yeah, libertarian's good. Uh, we we apply it in just about, you know, every circumstance. So. I, know, I just, uh, I, I wanted to point out, uh, I mean, I realize how ridiculously cliche it is, but nearly everything that's playing out in Venezuela right now is almost following to the letter what Ayn Rand laid out in uh, Atlas Shrugged. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say it's true. She understood economics reasonably, quite well, yeah. So. I don't know. It just uh, it, it, it amuses me to some level, and also uh, on a human level, it's very saddening well, to hear. Right, it's horrifying. I mean, these yeah. guys are hungry. You know, they're standing in lines to try to get food. In fact, the, one of the articles we've read previously and within the last couple of weeks talked about how in order to get basic stuff like chicken, which is also you know quite uh, in short supply over there, but if you can find it, you've got to wait in a line at one store. Then you've got to go wait in a line at another store because usually you don't just go to the store for chicken, right? If you're going to go to the store, you want to get more than one thing. I mean, that's how we do it here. It would be silly to go and make seven trips to the store every single day of the week to get different things. But in the case in Venezuela, the stores don't have everything that somebody wants. So one guy said he had to go to five different stores to get five different items, which means waiting in five different lines. You literally have to spend all day or an entire weekend hunting down whatever food or, you know, soap. They were having trouble finding detergent uh, in Venezuela. So it's very, very difficult to even go and get the shopping done. Even if you wait in one line, you probably then have to go to another store and wait. I, I want to give my, my critique for Ayn Rand here. I think that uh, that she did a really good job of sort of, you know, she's got some great quotes and sort of the, the painful truth of economics and, and individual freedom and things like that. But at the same time, many of much of her stuff about altruism, uh, like it— it isn't phrased in a fashion that some people can accept. Yeah, she misses the point a little bit. She has a tendency to paint Christ figures, and I don't think the world is quite that black and white, um, especially given you know just her own personal life kind of went against a lot yeah. of what she had wrote about, but uh, that's neither here nor there, apparently. <laughs> Don, thanks for your call tonight. Welcome to the program. We're on every Saturday night there on WIBC. And you can get us online uh, anytime on freetalklive.com. Thanks for the comments. Uh, do you guys have a podcast? Why, that I can yes. Download? Why, yes, we do. Because, uh, like a good capitalist, I go to work every day. So, Here's what I'd recommend um, that, you do. Number one, uh, go to freetalklive.com. You can download our podcast, you know, hook up your uh, our podcast with your podcast client there. We've also got live streaming there. But uh, also call uh, WIBC up. Talk to the program director and tell them thanks for adding Free Talk Live because we do the show seven nights a week. And the more nice things that program directors hear about us, the more likely they're going to take more. They're human, uh, too. Yeah, more nights of the show. So thank you, Don. Again, that's freetalklive.com. Most program directors are human. For the call tonight. <laughs> it's true. In the radio business, there, unfortunately, has been a lot of, uh, I guess you could say. Automation. Automation. Okay, systems, so yeah. some some pro- program directors are human. Some program directors are sort of program directors in name only in the radio business today, where they essentially are taking orders from on high in some of these mega mega companies. Yeah, uh, that's... a couple of whom carry Free Talk Live. So thank you, uh, Clear Channel. And Yay! Thank you, mega or, companies or uh, Cumulus and iHeartMedia or whatever. Our toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Doug's in Chicago. You're on Free Talk Live, listening via the TuneIn app. Hello, Doug. Hi, how you doing? Welcome. Yeah, sir. you know the tune in the tune in app really can be great. I didn't even know about your show until about a week ago. Wow, and, how'd you uh, find us? You know, I went in, I typed in libertarian on the top, and your show came up. And, how far uh, down really the list were we? Thing. How far were we down? You're, you're up toward the top. <laughs> okay, good to know. Um, but I mean, it really can be a wonderful thing for the fact that you have the whole month there of your entire program. You can download it into your phone like I do, and then Bluetooth it to the radio in your car. You know, when you're driving and you and you have to go out. Sweet. But uh. Yeah, I pretty much called to talk about, you know, private property. You were talking about it earlier on an earlier show. Let's do and, that, uh, Doug, but stand by. I want to make sure you get your thoughts out here in a moment. Doug in Chicago, we'll talk about private property, something that people have even less of in Venezuela now with the state going around and nationalizing industries over the last decade or two. Uh, 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number here tonight. And more about the just a- disastrous economic situation that that country is in still to come here on Free Talk Live, you can take control. 
This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. The nation's quadriplegics immobilized on Washington in support of stem cell research. And a Penn State t-shirt is awkwardly looked away from. And now for the weekly feature your fragile, susceptible mind already has your lips salivating for. This is The Onion Week in Review. Sources reported today that 10-year-old Brandon Thomas, who is currently homesick at his friend Kevin's sleepover, needs to just tough it the f*** out. I don't feel like playing Xbox right now. The pathetic little bitch who claims he just doesn't feel like eating any birthday cake or joining in any activities with his friends, frankly needs to grow a pair because his parents only live 10 minutes away, for Christ's sake. Here's what the whiny pansy had to say for himself. I wasn't crying. It's just allergies. I want to go home. What a f***ing wuss. In other news, a voicemail from mom is deleted three words in, and a man with nice eyes is blown. All right, now off with you. I can't have you seeing me like this. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free. More about the just sort of economic madness going on over in Venezuela where things just continue to spiral down into a pit of despair. Uh, we'll continue with that. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. You can also get some uh, interesting stuff from LegalZoom.com. If you are thinking about starting a business, you can incorporate 
with the documents that they can help you with over at LegalZoom.com. It's fast and easy, and they've got all kinds of legal documents there. Use code FTL and save $10 off your order. That's LegalZoom.com with code FTL. Let's bring Doug back on in Chicago. Doug, you said you wanted to talk about private property, and now you can do that. Go ahead. Yeah, you should kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about. I read about the whole issue between uh, you and the town of Keene with the couch, you know. <laughs> oh, that's an <laughs> old one. That happened. Yeah. Um, I, got I, two I have that, that couch I... on my property now if you want to buy it. It's famous. <laughs> never, you never did remove it, huh? No, um, no. Uh, I actually, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, my, my business partner, Ian, he had the problems with the couch. I live in the next town over. Um, I, we, we kidnapped the couch so that Ian would, uh, you know, because he would never going to say he was wrong or whatever. So we just took the couch and took it to my house so it would stop the problem. Right. I give him credit for that for uh, you know, he, not backing down. He's a brave, brave um, man. Well, ultimately, I, I had to back down. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have been locked in prison forever. But uh, but I did go to jail over it. So. Yeah, I mean, when you well, when you deal with a local government like Chicago or Philadelphia, it can be like dealing with North Korea. I'm sure the town of Keene can be pretty bad too. But uh, I got two people that I mountain bike ride with, and they bought a home back in like I think 2002 or 2003, and the home had been pre 1900. Um, they knew it had been an older home, but they didn't know that you know the Chicago Landmark Commission that they were going to try and put an overlay on it to prevent them from doing what they wanted to it. They bought the home with the intention of rehabilitating it, and uh, they were pretty much told by the Chicago Landmark Commission, no, you cannot put that type of window in, no, you cannot put that type of roof on. You now have to come to the, to the Chicago government for approval for anything that you do to it. And it can be a very common thing nationwide. Yeah, they're, they're like the historic districts in some cases. That's correct. what they're doing here in Keene. There's a certain swath of downtown Keene that is in the historic district, and that means basically you can't do anything without asking permission. Right. Um, so, yeah, right. a lot of people are familiar but, with that. But, but what a lot of people don't know, and I didn't know, I didn't know, it can be that the government, they can put that overlay, the local overlay, on the property without your okay. I mean, well, they, duh. They do it They're the government. Okay. <laughs> and I, I, find it, I find it incredible that nationwide that people, you know, are not outraged about it. I mean, that, Well, you know, I mean, there's were, plenty of people who are outraged about it. I mean, I know that when the historic district was forced down upon the people of Keene, there were some people who were outraged about it, specifically the people who lived within the historic district who were going to be affected by it. The problem is, is one of the the issue, the big issues in the United States is apathy. And I don't know how bad this issue is in other places, but it's certainly bad where where we are. Wherein, oh, the historic district's only going to affect a small portion of downtown Keene. Well, all of a sudden, no one outside of that area really cares. Well, or that you uh, get people to vote on it. So if, for instance, um, I mean, you know, there's. 10% of people own really nice houses downtown and 90% of the people in town uh, don't own them, but they like to drive downtown and look at them, mm -hmm. then certainly they'll agree to all kinds of rules on those 10% of people yeah. um, in order to uh, you know, be able to preserve what it is that they believe they like. Now, who's to say that the government actually is going to be efficient at doing that? That's, that's beside the point. But if you were to vote and say, hmm, let's take the top 10% of uh, earners and take all their money uh, for taxes and make them pay for stuff, of course you're going to be able to get 90 percent of people to say yes to that and it really can be it can be like a mob rule type of thing i mean and they get the government to act on their behalf and and make the property owner do what they want they're literally shoving down an ideology down upon people that the property owner might not want and then you have to go whenever you want to do anything to your home it can be like you have to get permission I mean, we're not talking permission to do electrical work, which could, you know, make a fire and kill people. We're talking about permission like, I want to put in a different type of window. I want a different color on my home. I want to put on a different type of roof. You know, when, when did we become where the individual don't matter and collectively we now have to have, like, my It wasn't rules, in my know? lifetime, I can tell you that. Yeah. I mean, there are the yeah. zoning ordinances, historic district. This stuff has all been around as long as I've been an adult. So I imagine the answer to your question is a few generations ago, whenever the first time was, uh, maybe it was several, you know, several generations ago, it was whenever the first time some busybody on a city council somewhere decided to propose that, well, I say we shouldn't have... Have this uh, kind of ornament in the front yard, and what say you? And then you know, well, others say yes. I say we stop, put a stop to that. You know, and then, and then as long as people put the ornament away or whatever it was that the ordinance was regulating, as long as people jump through that first hoop, well, you can better believe that the next time the city council meets, they're going to put up another two hoops for you to jump through. And then well, now, you, before and, you know it, and, and, several generations have gone by, and now there's a zillion of these things. 
And real quick, you really, real quick, you really don't have it end with it. I mean, I'm I'm reading about a lot of them nationwide. We have a town called Homer Glen in the Chicago metropolitan area, and they've come up with a law now where you, even in your own backyard, you cannot remove a tree. You have to have permission, and you have to show <laughs> the village of Homer Glen that you have the tree dying and oh, in danger of a property in, in order Illinois. to take it out. Yeah. Well, this is yeah, that's oh, yeah. not an uncommon at all. And I'll tell you where it started. It started with the electrical wiring. I've taken I'm down sure. trees here in New Hampshire, and that hasn't been a problem here. Yes, I understand that uh, you've done that. Uh, but it happens all across the country. They yeah. they, they believe they own your trees too. Um, and this it started with the electrical stuff that you're talking about. It's the most obvious regulation that it's believed that it's needed. It's like, hey, if we don't ha- if we don't make sure that uh, a licensed contractor gets a permit and and you know whoever puts in this electrical work, somebody could buy the house and burn the house down, and you know. It'd burn the next house down and all that other stuff and Ooh, scary once you know once you can make one scary story then you can sell any scary story i was once in the office of a dental hygienist and i uh, kind of chuckled that she was government uh, certified and that the mechanic down the street wasn't uh, that he might have had um, you know uh, you know some kind of mechanic certification but it wasn't a government certification you know this woman with the straightest face as you could possibly said well you can die if i do my job wrong and it's like she'd never heard of brakes before yeah. I, I mean, I'm of the viewpoint I own my property. I don't rent it from the government. You know, I mean, it can be one thing if I want to, you know, make a, a, a uh, an issue with a neighbor, you know, where I build my home all the way out to the property line. I'm infringing upon them maybe by making their property flood. But now we're to the degree where you can't even make your home look like you want it to look. You know, yep. I mean, that. What country are we living in? You know, and and by well, it's the way, not only that, that it's not only that you can't make your home look how you want it to look, but it's in a lot of places. That's everywhere, not just within a deed restricted neighborhood, which is the way that should be. It should be to where, okay, if you're the kind of control freak who wants to try to tell somebody what color they can paint their house and how high their lawn has to be, then you should move into a neighborhood with a bunch of other control freaks so you can all go ahead and fight it out at the neighborhood association meeting and then leave me the hell alone and uh, my property because I don't want to live around people like that but unfortunately right. those those same kind of control freakish uh, ordinances have spread out to entire counties and uh, entire but, but, cities but what they're doing what they're doing can be you've already got people in a neighborhood you've already got people in a home and they're already putting the law upon them you know what i mean it it ain't like right. you're going in and you're buying the home knowing okay i have right. that law put over the property they're putting it on them and they're telling them you know what we don't care whether you want it or not we're putting it on it Oh, it can be for I, the common good. W- you know? Welcome to property ownership, Doug. I mean, this is how it's been, uh, like I said, for for my whole lifetime. You don't actually own the property. See, that's the secret is that, yeah. you know, you when you don't pay the property taxes, you will find out that you don't actually own the property because they're at some point going to send threatening letters. And then following the threatening letters, if you continue to ignore them, they'll put a tax lien on your house, which is, you know, a, a, a special power that municipalities have to be able to just simply whisk your deed away from you and property taxes function remarkably like rent yeah it's and so you know right. all you have to do is not pay the property tax to discover the truth about that stuff and i thank you doug for your call tonight and also would thank recommend you. if you love the ideas of liberty and i don't know if you do doug because we don't know each other but if you do <laughs> i would recommend you check out the free state project there are people leaving places like illinois we actually have rob Mathias who moved out of chicago uh, last year, and he started up uh, the Rebel Love Show in Manchester, and he's just been just raving you know, about. I thought about it real quick. I thought yeah. about that, but then I watched the video of Derek J or, or Derek J, correct? The yeah. guy in your radio show. Yeah. And I watched him how the judge pretty much lied when he got to the top floor and claimed that Derek had been threatening him. And then I heard on your radio show about how you have a law out there. Correct me if I'm wrong about how in New Hampshire you have to have your car taken in yearly and have it <laughs> checked out before they give you. I'm yeah. like, it, it would be much better than what I'm living in now. No, it's going to be a lot better. Here's what I'd recommend you check out. Check out the 101 Reasons film. Go to 101reasonsfilm.com. There's a really great 60-minute documentary there that goes over some amazing things about New Hampshire. And that whole uh, car registration thing, just keep your car registered in Illinois. You'll be fine. Uh, there's more coming up, or some other states, because Illinois is probably terrible. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. At the end of the 19th century, many intellectuals abandoned the idea that people have natural rights, believing instead that freedom was a privilege. This idea inspired a generation of activists called progressives, who argued that the Constitution's principles had become obsolete. Progressivism was best expressed by Supreme Court Justice Brandeis. Individual rights, he said, must be remolded from time to time to meet the changing needs of society. Our founders knew that if rights can be remolded, it meant you have no rights at all. The income tax and the prohibition of alcohol 
were just two ideas progressives advocated. The Constitution stood in their way, but they argued it could simply be reinterpreted. This living Constitution idea triumphed in the Supreme Court in the 1930s, and its impact remains with us today. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. Worried about getting sick and feeling terrible for days or even weeks? You need Immudine for a healthy immune system. Why get sick and bother with products that just don't work? For just a dollar a day, Immudine is all natural and safe for all lifestyles. Call 866-257-8668 to buy now before it's too late, before you get sick. Or go to immudyne.com, immudine.com, or call 866-257-8668. You ever hear about Ghost 80% AR-15 rifle kits? At Guns80.com, they are the 80% specialists, helping to protect our privacy. Look, there are forces out there right now trying to register guns for future confiscation. UN treaties threatening our Second Amendment, our freedom. You need a Ghost AR-15. Get it at Guns80.com. Call 844-2-GUNS-80. That's 844-248-6780. Own an AR-15 today and keep it a secret. Go to Guns80.com. That's Guns80.com. 844-2-GUNS-80. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. Woo! That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free and take control of the airwaves here. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you there. Uh, coming up this week on Free Talk Live, we will be continuing. Normally, we don't sell what's coming up this week on Free Talk Live, but we will be continuing Silk Road coverage. For those of you who are only hearing our Saturday night shows, maybe because your radio station only carries Saturday nights, we have been covering in great detail or as in much detail as we can uh, get away with the Silk Road trial of Ross Ulbricht. He's the man accused of running the underground inf infamous marketplace that was a place where people could go to buy drugs and fake IDs and all kinds of interesting stuff like that. Uh, he's been now on trial for two full weeks. Third week kicks off presumably on Monday. And I know John Bush from the Liberty Beat is already going to be heading down to or back up to New York City from Austin 
and uh, he's heading up there tomorrow. So he'll be getting into town, and we'll be hopefully hearing from him uh, at some point during next week, and we'll continue to share with you as much about that trial as possible. So if you've been wanting the latest on the Silk Road trial, just revisit the last few days' worth of the show. We covered it Friday, Wednesday, and Tuesday of last week. So check that out at freetalklive.com. WashingtonPost.com reporting on Venezuela and how absolutely terrible things are and how they just keep getting worse thanks to, of course, socialism. Now, in other cases, other countries are socialist, but they're not in as bad of shape as Is Venezuela. Is there a country right? that's not socialist? That's a good point. I mean, pretty much all of them are, Well, right? I, okay, so I don't want to say country. I think country is a misleading term because country can refer to dirt, and dirt isn't socialism. Um, however, is there a uh, governmental organization that isn't socialist? And this Not is the that question, I know of. This is the question I want to ask because what my de- the definition of socialism, as I was taught in school, is state ownership of the means of production, right? Yes. And that means that they own factories and things like that. But really, the ultimate means of production are two things. Earth and all her bounty, and people that uh, wander around on Earth, right? Yes. So if the I government, see where you're going with this. If the government claims to own your labor in the form of income tax, right? Like they, if they, if somebody can take a percentage of your labor, then they must own your labor because ownership is about control. And if they can control how much of their of your labor they get, then they they are. It, they own it, right? And as we just talked with the last gentleman on the phones, they also control your land because if you don't pay them their rental fees, which they call property taxes, yep. uh, then they'll kick you off the land. And so they own the land on which all of yep. the factories they are They own located. the people and they own the land. And they own the people, yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, now, we could argue what legitimate ownership it is and all of those things, but I mean, the government claims to own the people and the government oh. claims to own the land. The word legitimate has at its base legal. Legal, right? So the, the word legitimate it is definitely applied to government ownership of things. Now, we, you and I don't see it as a good thing, uh, but they certainly do. So I consider every state that has existed, autocracy, uh, fascism, uh, socialist, uh, d- democratic republics, whatever it is, to all be socialist. The Fabian socialists agreed with this uh, definition. So we're not talking about social, you know, uh, socialist governments and non-socialist governments. We're talking about the spectrum of socialist governments. So really, Venezuela and what we're seeing here are just some of the socialist policies and their inevitable outcomes. Uh, it's just the currently most failing, obviously most failing uh, country in the world, at least that you know has come across my desk. I'm sure there's some North other Korea. examples. North Korea is a good example, but you don't get data from North Korea. You can't really know what's going on. They're actually doing moment. better than they were in the 90s because they had that huge famine. There's still people starving. but Well, they're doing better because the black market is essentially flourished in North Korea. The Jangmadang, I believe, as it's called. And there's an entire generation of people who've been raised on the black market. And so there's quite a bit of, of bustling economic activity going on in North Korea as a result of the black market. And the government has finally learned to look the other way. Whereas in Venezuela, they're cracking down on hoarders and they're cracking down on people who are selling outside of the legitimate marketplace, among other things. Here's the latest from the Washington Post. The problem with socialism, writes their author here at, uh, let's see, Matt O'Brien is that you eventually run out of other people's money. That's the famous uh, Margaret Thatcher. Excuse me, he says, it isn't that you eventually run out of other people's money, it's that you eventually run out of oil money. Well, at least in Venezuela. It doesn't have an economy, you see, so much as a poorly running oil exporting business that isn't enough to subsidize everything else. But the government has never run any business very well. Any any concern gets... I mean, you you can see... Which is why I was horrified when they took over the grocery stores in Venezuela. You can see the inefficiencies of uh, controlled marketplaces simply by watching what the government does it was true when oil was more than a hundred dollars a barrel so now that it's under fifty dollars a barrel oh. venezuela's government has gone from defaulting on its own people as former minister ricardo hasman puts it in the form of rampant inflation and shortages to really doing so to the point that it might have to start defaulting on its debt too. that's why yeah that's the reason i have uh, predicted the uh, the dissolution of the venezuelan state within I'm I'm just gonna say the next year. I mean, I don't want to be held too firm to it. I mean, if it's if it's dissolution, 14 months, when you say that, you mean like a military coup collapse. or something? It's gonna collapse. Oh, well, how am I gonna yeah. know how it's gonna go? But I right. mean, it's gonna collapse in some fashion or another. It shouldn't be this way, says the author here at the Washington Post. Venezuela, after all, has the largest oil reserves in the world. It should be rich, but they're not, and they're getting even poorer now because of economic mismanagement on a world historical scale. 
The problem is simple. Venezuela's government thinks it can have an economy by just pretending that it does, that it can print as much money as it wants without stoking inflation by just saying that it won't, and that it can end shortages just by kicking people out of line. It's a triumph of magical thinking that's not much of one when it turns to grocery. Why is it magical thinking when these things that uh, the, that the government uh, is doing in Venezuela um, is doing more of them than what they're doing in every other country? Right? I mean, what Venezuela is doing, it's not doing anything. There are price controls in other countries, including the United States. Um, sure, but nothing like Venezuela where right, they're agreed. actually controlling the price of the currency. Right. Uh, well, they agreed. They're trying to control the price of the currency, but they do that through um, issuance of currency here in the United States and around the world. It's magical thinking everywhere. It's just on display in Venezuela. Well, there's no doubt about that. And and also, at least with the rest of the world, the you can argue that the U.S. Federal Reserve and the banking system here is certainly trying their best to manipulate things in their favor with the, uh, the money situation here. But in Venezuela, you've got a, a scene where the government has set an exchange rate on the boulevard. They have set the exchange rate. The last time I read about this, it was about 6.3, I believe it was, bolivars mm -hmm. per U.S. dollar, when in point of fact, you can actually get about 150 bolivars for a dollar on the black market. Yeah. So that's one factor that's just royally screwing everything up in the economy. And so certain socialist countries don't take these insanely, obviously bad, drastic measures, but that's one of the reasons why things are so uh, on display there is because... Well, there's no way to hide it anymore. They're trying to prevent people from taking pictures of the food, uh, the bread lines, essentially. But there's so many cell phones, even in Venezuela, it's going to be impossible to prevent that from Sooner happening. Sooner or later, you run out of other people's money. So uh, going on here, he says that it turns uh, – it's not much of one when it turns grocery shopping into a days-long ordeal that may or may not actually turn up things like food or toilet paper. This reality has been a long time coming. Venezuela, you see, has the most oil reserves, but not the most oil production. That's in part because of the Bolivarian regime, first under Chavez and now Maduro, has scared off foreign investment and bungled its state-owned oil company so much that production has fallen 25% since it took power in 1999. Can you See, imagine? This is, this is the difficulty is, is when you do these coups, these nationalizations, when the, you, the, you decide that the government's going to be the best manager of this or that or the other thing, is if I'm going to put hundreds of millions of dollars into getting uh, fossil fuels out of the ground in your country. I need to know that I'm going to recoup that money and I need to be able to make enough uh, money on top of the, you know, paying the paychecks of all the people that are right. going to help me do it. Who wants to invest in a company in Venezuela when they know this power mad nutcase, uh, Nicolas Maduro could come in there and take it all away at any given moment. Right. And I'm not saying that rich people are moral or rich people are good or better or anything like that. No, but they I, want to return on their investment. Th that much is obvious. Well, there's three different types of rich people, and I think it's really important to look at them. There's somebody who got wealthy by providing goods and services to people on a voluntary basis. That's the best kind of rich person. That's yeah. The, yeah, the the one that the hero in our story. Um, there's the ones that inherited the money from some rich person. It's a mixed bag with those guys. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know how you can really fault them, but they've got some money. They've got some money, and really what they are is this, they're the um, they're, they're holders of wealth, and they're redistributing it to people when they buy you know, big cars and Learjets and things like that, because people mm -hmm. work to build those things, right? right? You know, there's, there's uh, a rich person buys a Learjet, but 15, 20, 30, I don't know how many, a um, hundred poor people or middle class people work to build it. And those people then get the money as a result. Um, and then there's the people that have used state violence. Either they work for the government and they um, did insider trading based on information like our good Congress critters have uh, made it legal for themselves to do. Mm -hmm. Or they, um, you know, bought and paid for some Congress critters. They're not that expensive. You can get you can get a whole handful of them. You can get a passel of them relatively cheaply if, with the right lobbyists. And, uh, you know, those people that have used... Used, uh, you know, state violence to get what they want. Those are the bad rich people, right? We'll come back with more. You can share your thoughts with us about whether it's Venezuela or economics, rich people, etc. 855 450 free. We'll talk more about Venezuela on the way. This is Free Talk Live. Hour three's coming up. Inventory isn't about products, kid. It's about money. Products sitting on shelves is money sitting on shelves. I hate overstock. I hate understock. I hate wasting time. I hate wasting money. That's why I love Granger. Granger Keepstock Solutions help us manage our facility's inventory so we have exactly what we need when we need it. No more, no less. It's inventory management my way. Get it? Got it? 
good. Visit Granger.com slash keep stock for more information. Granger for the ones who get it done. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. Yeah! Yeah! This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, January 23rd, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,299, silver at $18.33, and Bitcoin is trading around $229. Today's precious metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. How much food is in your pantry right now? Could you feed your family for two weeks, one week? How about even three days without any help? Keeping an emergency food storage kit is the most effective way to begin to ensure your family's well-being during an emergency. eFoods Direct is food security for whatever the future holds. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Bean or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, Silk Road Trial, Day 6, which began with Defense Attorney Joshua Dreidel cross-examining FBI agent Tom Kiernan. He's the computer specialist who first examined Ross Ulbricht's computer after his arrest. Ulbricht is the creator of the Silk Road Marketplace and is charged with crimes associated with his alleged involvement in facilitating drug sales between vendors and customers. Part of Dreidel's questioning focused on the fact that BitTorrent, a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing program, was running on Ulbricht's computer. It appeared he was trying to insinuate that through malware put on Ulbricht's computer, through BitTorrent, someone could have placed the chat logs and journals on his hard drive. Any doubt that may have been in the jury's mind after hearing about the possibility of malware likely vanished after the state's redirect, where U.S. Attorney Howard asked Agent Kiernan if the computer did in fact have any malware. Kiernan replied in the negative. Of significance for the defense, there were chats from Ulbricht with a friend, where he states he sold the site in the fall of 2011. That aligns with an interview conducted in 2013 with Dread Pirate Roberts by Wired reporter Andy Greenberg, where DPR states he acquired the site from someone else. The revelation seems to go along with the defense's narrative that Ulbricht built the site, but later gave it up after it became too stressful. Also revealed during the day through discussion between the judge and the defense is the possibility that Ulbricht himself may take the stand. The Liberty Beat will keep you up to date as the trial continues. To support our efforts to have journalists on the ground through the entirety of the trial in New York, visit thelibertybeat.com and click the support link. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Beat is sponsored by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. This is the Liberty Beat. For Friday, January 23rd, 2015, check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. After more than two years behind bars, journalist Barrett Brown has been sentenced to 63 months in federal prison.
That word from the Liberty Beats' Derek Bros, who was present during the sentencing yesterday in Dallas, Texas. Brown was also ordered to pay $890,000 in restitution to a number of companies hacked in 2011. Brown was arrested in September of 2012 and has been behind bars for charges stemming from his reporting on the hacking of the servers of H.B. Gary Federal and Stratford by the decentralized hacker collective Anonymous. Upon release, Brown cannot handle credit cards, checks, or bank accounts. He'll be on parole for at least two years and will only be allowed to use an approved computer, which will monitor all of his activity. An Iowa police officer had his job reinstated after being arrested in December of 2013 for domestic abuse that caused injury and fourth-degree criminal mischief. According to police reports, Officer Cody Grimes choked his former girlfriend, threw her down the stairs of his house, and then threw her in his kitchen after she threatened to report him. Well, that caused her to hit her head and hand. Grimes pled guilty to the lesser charge of criminal mischief, avoiding jail time and paying $1,000 instead. As a result, prosecutors dropped the domestic abuse charge. Now, over one year later, the Civil Service Commission of Des Moines has given Cody Grimes his job back, saying that firing him was too severe a punishment. Des Moines police are even giving Grimes a raise. Grimes has a history of abuse, both domestic and on the job. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, January 23rd, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. It's now been seven days since a group of hikers went missing in Maine's Acadia National Park, but rescue crews there are still holding out hope of finding them alive. Autistic reporter Michael Falk is on the scene there. Michael. Hello, Brooke. My socks got wet. That cameraman gave me new socks. I am fine. That's good, Michael, but what's the situation there? The names of the hikers are Casey Allman, Brian Emery, Ashley Thorson. The hikers were last seen 174 hours ago. Since then, three very big storms have hit here. There's a 1.24% chance that all of the hikers are alive. Why are you looking for the hikers? Well, we're still hopeful that we might be able to find them. There's been a break in the weather, so we're hoping that. Over the past seven days, the average high temperature has been 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Over the past seven days, the average low temperature has been 6 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. So we did another sweep of the park from the air, but we didn't see anything. Without shelter, the human body can withstand temperatures this cold for a maximum of three hours. Is there shelter in the forest for the hikers? Not that we know of. They're frozen. Well, we like Shh. This is the Onion News Network. Live. You can bring up anything that you want right here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, Ian here. And Mark. We've been talking about Venezuela just because it is fascinating to watch a train wreck and tragic at the same time, but you just can't look away. Uh, you know people are probably getting hurt, that there are people who might have, might have perished in that train wreck. Uh, but you just even, can't look away. Well, even if uh, people are being hurt, and they are certainly being hurt in uh, Venezuela by these uh, price controls and that sort of thing, um, I mean, you know, it's <laughs> it's it's going to be instructive for the rest of us. There's something to be learned here, absolutely. Uh, it's just unfortunate that people are probably starving and you know being robbed and killed over the ridiculous economic situation that they've been placed in by some terrible socialist policies, which aren't so different in, in, in theory, at least, from socialist policies around the world, uh, but they've just be become writ large in Venezuela. We'll continue the story here from the Washington Post, talking about the state-owned oil company. Remember, there was lots of nationalism under uh, current President Nicolas Maduro and prior to him, of course, Hugo Chavez. Lots of nationalizing. Did I say nationalism before? Well, Lots of nationalizing. Both uh, of those things, probably. <laughs> companies in Venezuela. And boy, when I heard they were nationalizing the grocery stores, I thought, that's not going to end well. And sure enough, the shelves are empty in a lot of cases yeah. in the grocery stores in Venezuela. The, the state-owned oil company 
uh, was screwed up so bad by the Venezuelan government ownership, so much that production has fallen 25% since it took power in 1999. I mean, these guys are literally sitting on the world's largest oil reserves. But as the article points out, they do not have the most oil production. So they're sitting on essentially all this money. And because of state mismanagement and the fact that, you know, when the state runs things, they just don't have the same incentives that businessmen have. So, oh, we'll just cut back production 25%. Screw it. Why bother? You're looking pretty silly right now if you're a um, an oil-controlling organization and you weren't selling as much as you possibly could over the last In the couple of— In heyday? Yeah, over the last couple of years when gas prices were at 4 bucks a gallon. Even worse, oil exports have fallen by half. Why? Well, a lot of Venezuela have fallen by half. A lot of Venezuela's crude stays home where it's subsidized to the you can't afford not to fill up price of 1.5 US cents per gallon. Yes, really. And now you know why a lot of people are taking that uh, that oil and gas and trucking it across the border into Colombia. 1.5 cents. That's correct. Wow. Some of it gets sent to friendly governments like Cuba's in return for medical care, and another chunk goes to China as a payment in kind for the $45 billion that it's borrowed from them. But that doesn't leave enough oil money to pay the bills. Again, the Bolivarian regime is to blame. The trouble is that while it has tried to help the poor, which is commendable, it has also spent much more than it can afford, which is not. Indeed, Venezuela's government is now running a 14% of gross domestic product deficit right now, meaning that the deficit, the amount of money the, of, that is the difference between what the government is Making. budgeting yeah. and what it is actually spending is 14 is uh, excuse me that that well, amount is 14 percent of the gross domestic product in that country. a deficit is the difference between what is brought in and what is spent oh the budget i, I thought it was a i thought that meant they were spending more than their budget it's that's not what it means now not the budget it's not the budgetary issue it's it's how much you're bringing in versus how much you're you're spending so if you make $500 a week mm-hmm. and you spend $550 a week you have a $50 budgetary uh, deficit if you spend 450 and you make 500 you have a $50 surplus gotcha. so if you continue to do uh, to spend too much over the course of say 10 months and you do the same thing over and over you have a $500 debt based on 10 months of $50 deficits. A fiscal hole that's so big, there's only one way to fill it, the printing press. But that just traded one economic problem, that is too little money, for the opposite one. After all, paying people with newly printed money only makes that money lose value, and prices go parabolic. It's no wonder that Venezuela's inflation rate is officially 64%. It's really something like 179% and could get up to 1,000%, according to Bank of America, if Venezuela doesn't change its Byzantine currency controls. We'll continue with uh, more on just the economic disaster that is happening in Venezuela. First, Jeff is on the line listening to WRMN in Elgin, Illinois. Hello, Jeff. Hi, guys. Have you heard of the word riot, R-Y-O-T? R-Y-O-T? What is that? This is in Black's Law Dictionary. Type it in on, uh, do a search on it while I'm talking. Uh, In India, it means a peasant, a subject, or tenant of house or land. Okay, this is about real estate taxes. Okay. Okay, so, and that's from Wharton. And so riot tenure means a system of land tenure where the government takes the place of landowners and collects the rent by means of tax gatherers. The farming is done by poor peasants, riots, who find the capital so far as there is any, and also do the work. The system exists in Turkey, Egypt, Persia, and other eastern countries, and in a modified form in British India. After slavery, it is accounted the worst of all systems because the government can fix the rent at what it pleases, and it is difficult to distinguish between rent and taxes. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. So are, is your claim that uh, we are not slaves, we are rioters? R-Y-O-T. Everybody should look it up. And I'm getting I it now. Even, yeah. I even made an engraved plaque of it. Uh, I made a large one, and I made little ones to go well, under the Well, you didn't the really answer Mark's question. Is that what you're claiming, that everyone in the world is, is a riot? Well, I'm, I'm, well I, you know, it mentioned those other countries, and I'm saying that here in America and in Illinois we have— uh, this riot tenure, where if you have real estate taxes, do you really own the property? You no. Know? It, and also, it, they've taken the definition out of newer Black's Law dictionaries. 
for some reason. They don't want you to see it. Yeah, I've heard those claims um, in the past. Uh, that you I've, know, I've heard that, but yeah, anyway, but I, but I have the fourth edition, you know. Yeah, different la- Black's Law dictionaries will have uh, sort of different definitions as time goes by. They they, they curate them, <laughs> you know. Jeff, I, thanks I for— have my, Thanks a lot. I have my dad's copy of it, and people try to buy it, but I wouldn't sell it. <laughs> thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate the thanks. heads up. Let's go to Fred. He's in Battle Creek, Michigan, listening to WBCK-FM. Hey, Fred. Hi, I want to talk about uh, Russia and uh, how they've, uh, you know, almost been instrumental in, in what's happening in Venezuela. Okay. And how, you know, how they, you know, they they made Obama come out smelling like a rose in his speech because they've done more work for the world and our country in the last six months by uh, flooding the market. They stopped Putin, you know, uh, brought him to his knees, and they took lowered our gas prices. They stopped the fracking industry. They're actually who's they? Shout, I'm saying the Saudi Arabians by flooding the market with gas now. Okay. They've affected so many areas, and that's what's affecting Venezuela and Iran. And what it is is one of the reasons that uh, Iran's such a t- touchy sub- subject now is that they they take with their oils right now, and they're they're we can talk to them, we can maybe do something because they're they're suffering just like. Uh, Venezuela, these countries that totally depend on oil. So what I'm saying is, is, is just by virtue of what they've done in the last six months, I think it's to a degree good. It's given the the world stage breathing space, you see. Yeah, lower well, prices that, are good. Well, exactly. There's been good come out of it, you know. And what I'm saying is, is what I watch now is, is they've kind of hedged their bets, the Saudi Arabians, because they've they just did a deal. They had a two billion dollar deal and bought seven hundred. Uh, Light armored vehicle machinery from Canada, and now they just got another four billion dollar uh, contract signed, where they're going to have close to two thousand of these vehicles floating around over there. So why do they we? Have, so why does the United States have to go fight their war with ISIS then? Well, see, that's another thing. Is that there's a guy coming out with a book now, and you know the uh, Blackwater went over there a couple of years ago when that spring uprising came, and they've been a personal bodyguard in that uh, in Saudi Arabia. They've actually got a maritime. Uh, fleet going now to fight pirates, and it's it's all this is becoming privatized. What I'm saying, that's why they've hedged their bets, and that's why Netanyahu and uh, Boehner they want to push this issue because they want to uh, get rid of Iran. They want to start this war, and Netanyahu, for all intents and purposes, he's out because he's a whole new guard has come in to uh, vote this time around, and he'll be out. So just the situation is heating up, and. Uh, I guess there is good coming out of it. Uh, well, you know, there, that's certainly true, although uh, not in the case of the folks in Venezuela. I thank you for the call tonight, Fred. And, uh, yeah, I'm certainly enjoying – who doesn't enjoy lower gas prices? Uh, except for you know, people in Venezuela, people yeah. producing gas. We're coming up here, 855-450 free. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a 
powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't Tread on Meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't Tread on Meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves toll-free. This is the live Saturday edition, by the way. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And we've got Skype, our Skype username, is lrn.fm with you tonight you've got me ian and me mark and uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies that's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy technology communications and the rise of the police state go to freedomsphoenix.com And sign up for their free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com. As we go to continue with your calls and thoughts, uh, Patrick is listening in Maryland. Patrick, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Guys, I know it's an old topic, and I know we all have a tension deficit disorder, but I still can't seem to get it out of my craw that uh, James Taylor went with John Kerry over to uh, sing a song. And I can't help but think that he didn't just do it out of the goodness of his heart. Somebody paid for that. Obviously, he got a, he got a free ride. At the but very I'll, least, um, even if he didn't get a paycheck, which I wouldn't doubt that he got a paycheck, at the very least, he got sort of the uh, the presidential treatment, as it were. He flew over on Air Force One or Air Force, Force Two or Air Force 27, whatever it is, uh, and he you know, ate the finest foods and uh, had the finest accommodations, right? Yeah. How do we find out? If the guy got a check, if I wrote him a check, I want to know. I want to know if he got paid for that. How, how would you even find that out? And why is why isn't everybody just still going? Really, was that necessary? Was that just the biggest waste of time, energy, and effort? 
Well, I, I think that people have a, I, I think people expect this from the government. Um, this is this is normal beha- normalized behavior now. Uh, this isn't particularly surprising uh, to you. You may be shocked or whatever, but uh, I mean, I expect he did get a, t- a check. Um, I'm still going to enjoy his songs just as much. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, there's there's all kinds of people out there taking government checks for all kinds of silly things, and I, you know, I don't hold it against them either. I think that people expect this, and I don't think they're going to be. I don't think this isn't the next Benghazi, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Patrick? That'll do it. Thanks for the call, dude. I appreciate it. Toll free number here is 855 450 free, the live Saturday edition. Yeah, you know, when the Republicans get in power, and they'll get in power again, because that's how this little ping pong ball goes, they're going to do the same kind of crap. And they're, mm. they're, you know, the government. No, co- Mark, they are so different from the Democrats. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, they, they really look Things very, Things are very really sim- going to turn around now in the United States, just like they did back in the year 2000 through 2006, right. when the government got so much smaller, and they- No, it got bigger. It got and bigger the taxes Bush. went down. Taxes went down. No, the, the, well, t- the, the taxes, taxes actually, tax burden did go down uh, during the Bush administration. The debt, however, went up. It didn't go up nearly what it went up under the Obama administration when, uh, with all the governmental spending for the the stimulus. And well, you know, all that may be true, but at least he didn't engage in any nation building. <laughs> right. He he promised all <laughs> those things, and the fact is, is that the government grows under Democrats. The government grows under Republicans, and mm. the, you know, this this whole this party's good. This co- party bad thing it is boring uh old and just i, I mean you have to I, i'm sorry you you almost have to be a fool to believe it anymore yeah okay for sure. i get how you can pick a party is not as bad as another party i can see how you can do that but in the process of doing that what often comes out of one's mouth is is that oh my party's good no 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 i can see why you might say uh you know that the, the 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 politician that uh, they're passing off on you is 49% bad and theirs is 51% bad or even you know 60% bad whatever it is that you might claim but to say yours is good as a result now sorry let's go back to venezuela this is the story from the washington post talking about just how bad things are and why they are the way they are uh, and he's pointing out a few things like oh i don't know the fact the inflation rate is acknowledged by the state of venezuela to uh, 60 for the country or whatever you want to call it. States are all the same to me. Anyway, that uh, their official inflation rate is 64%. Now, the U.S. government will tell you that the official inflation rate's what, like 3% or 1% or 2% or something in that Somewhere range? There. Uh, when, you know, the real inflation rate here is probably double digits, maybe lower double digits. They remove food, yeah. uh, housing, and fuel from the equation. So we don't know what they're removing from Once the equation. Once you remove those from the equation, I don't know what people are buying anymore. Yeah, we don't know what they're, how the Venezuelan government is calculating their official numbers, but just know the official numbers are 64%. Some estimates say that uh, the uh, the actual rate is around 179% and could go up to 1,000% according to the Bank of America if Venezuela doesn't change its Byzantine currency controls. Venezuela's government, in other words, is playing whack-a-mole with economic reality, and its exchange rate system is the hammer. It goes something like this. The Maduro regime wants to throttle the private sector, but spend money like it hasn't. And then it wants to print what it needs, but keep prices the same like it hasn't. Then, uh, finally, it wants to keep its stores stocked, but going back to step one, keep the private sector in check like it hasn't. This is where the currency system comes in. The government, you see, has set up a three-tiered exchange rate to try to control everything. Prices, profits, and production in the economy. The idea, if you want to call it that, is that it can keep prices low by pretending its currency is really stronger than it is. And then it can decide who gets to make money and how much by doling out dollars to importers at this artificially low rate, providing they charge what the government says. That might sound complicated, but it really isn't. Venezuela's government wants to wish away the inflation that it's created, so it tells stores what prices they're allowed to sell at. These bureaucrat-approved prices, however, are too low to be profitable, which is why the government has to give companies subsidies to make it worthwhile. 
Now, when these price controls work, the result is shortages. And when they don't, it's even worse shortages. Think about it like this. Companies that don't get cheap dollars at the official exchange rate would lose money selling at the official prices. So they leave their stores empty. But the ones that are lucky or connected enough to get cheap dollars might prefer to sell them for quick and maybe bigger profit in the black market. That uh, than to use them for what they're supposed to. So as I've put it before, it's not profitable for the unsubsidized companies to stock their shelves and not profitable enough for the subsidized companies to stock their shelves either. Not when you can go and get 170 bolivars for a dollar on the black market as opposed to the 6.3 that you can get for the dollar for a dollar on the legitimate market in Venezuela. It just messes with all kinds of economic incentives. And remember, this was a problem even when Venezuela it's had sad, dollars. It's sad, but you can't communicate with somebody who uh, wants to put price controls down. They they never care about um, about the issue of economics. All they care about is, well, what about people? People have to. I mean, your numbers are very interesting and everything, but we're talking about people here. People that need to eat. We need to keep the prices down so that people can. There's poor people in Venezuela, and they need to eat. And what they don't understand is is that pricing is there in order to you know place value on something. Eating is mm-hmm. important, and you, you you need to you're you're going to work so that you can eat. And if you you know if you're messing with the those things, it just it throws everything and uh, people are starving now, and it's because of the price controls. There's more about what's happening in Venezuela. Eight fifty five four fifty freeze the toll free number here tonight. You can bring up anything you'd like as well. It is the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. We do this thing seven nights per week. Plenty of time for your call and thoughts. You can also join us via Skype. Skype username here is lrn.fm. So feel free to reach on out and talk about whatever's on your mind. More about the economic disaster that is Venezuela. Coming up, this is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Genesis is defined as an origin, creation, or the beginning. Genesis Communications Network began with the mission of providing you with the kind of compelling content you're listening to now. And at GCNlive.com, you'll find a free archive of our nation's history, narrated by GCN hosts. Explore, share, and pass down to future generations. GCN is the future of talk radio, but we should always strive to learn from our past. Together, we are GCNlive.com. G-C-N. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here... I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why if you love liberty you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. 
It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control here toll free, 855 450 free, 855 450 3733. With you tonight, you've got me, Ian. And me, Mark. And join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. If you like the show and you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, you can get your shopping taken care of and help Free Talk Live all at the same time by going to shop.freetalklive.com. It's easy. You just go and you click into the right Amazon for you. There's different Amazons there. There's the Amazon for the U.S., for the U.K., for Canada. You click into the right one for you. Free Talk Live will get a cut of the sale. So whatever it is you're buying, you know, you're going to get the same great Amazon price, the same great free super saver shipping or Amazon Prime or whatever your shipping deal is. And Free Talk Live is going to get a cut of the sale by you simply entering through the links you'll find at shop.freetalklive.com. And for future reference, once you go to shop.freetalklive.com, click on the Amazon of your choice. So let's say you're in the United States. You click on Amazon US. Then if you bookmark that landing page, as soon as you land on Amazon, bookmark that page. And then just next time you need to go shopping, just jump to your bookmark and you don't have to go through the extra steps. And it still helps us out. So once again, start your shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Dot com In Venezuela, shopping is uh, its quite a chore at this point. You can maybe find the stuff you're looking for if you spend an entire weekend standing in various different lines at various different stores in the hopes that you'll get in there and they'll still have some detergent left. They're apparently using the police in some stores to hand out toilet paper to people because there's such a shortage of, of some of these basic items that customers are fighting uh, in and outside of the stores over them. They've brought in the uh, you know military police essentially into the streets. When there's shortages, uh, you know civil people are the ones who are going to come up short, right? Oh, please by all means, madam, go right ahead and take the last <laughs> yeah. box of detergent. Right. And now actually, got... these are probably mostly ladies, I would guess, that are waiting in these. I don't lines. think not ne not necessarily. Not necessarily. Well, people of it, all sorts. But you can wait all day and not necessarily get food in these lines, That's right? That's correct. So um, I'm just guessing, j traditionally, the way that families tend to go is, is the guy goes out and works. That's and the, probably a fair the, guess, I the guess. The woman uh, stays home and takes care of the house, which is a full-time job, and I'm not uh, disputing that. It's hard, hard work. But when now they're you know wasting time standing in line. So there's all kinds of just crazy economic disincentives uh, for these stores to, you know, not put things on the shelves. And according to the story over at WashingtonPost.com, the black market rate for the currency there, the boulevard, is tremendously different. Uh, you can get 100 and something, 50, 170 bolivars per U.S. dollar in the black market, but you can only get 6.3, I believe it is, bolivars per U.S. dollar on the regular marketplace. Um, because some of the uh, some of the companies that are selling product are receiving government subsidies to try to shore up their uh, their margins or whatever because they're selling products at fixed government rates. There's there's shortages as a result of that. But essentially, what's happening is that uh, 
the companies that don't get these cheap dollars at the official exchange rate, they would lose money selling at the officially restricted prices, so they just leave their stores empty. But the ones that are getting those cheap dollars would prefer to turn those dollars around on the black market so they can, you know, bank in and, and actually try to, you know, live a decent life in Venezuela. Because if you can get dollars in Venezuela, you can live fairly well. But getting the dollars is a fairly difficult thing to do. Uh, because, again, you get dollars, you sell them on the black market, and you can get quite a few bolivars uh, for those. Anyway, going on here. And remember, this was a problem even when Venezuela had dollars. This is from the Washington Post. Now it doesn't. Not when 95% of its exports come from oil and its price has fallen by half. It's actually a little worse than that since Venezuela's crude is so heavy that it sells at $5 a barrel discount to the rest of the world. Without as many petrodollars, Venezuela has had to cut back their on... Their, their oil's heavy? Does that mean it's not light, sweet crude? Is that the idea? I guess. Okay. Uh, without as many petrodollars, Venezuela has had to cut back on imports so much that its shortages, which had already hit 30% of all goods... Before the central bank stopped keeping track last year, have gone from being a fact of life to the fact of life. Things are so bad that there isn't a bank run, but who wants to save their worthless currency? Uh, rather, as Jonathan Wheatley puts it, a supermarket run. People have lined up for days to try to buy whatever they can, which isn't much from grocery stores that are even more empty than usual. The government has been forced to send the military into these supermarkets to maintain some semblance of order. Before, it came up with an innovative new strategy for shortening the lines, kicking them out of them. Now they're rationing spots in line based <laughs> on the last digit of people's national ID cards. So you've got a certain day on which you can go stand in, and line, stand in line to get stuff that you may or may not get something. Not get. Yeah. But just like Venezuela. This is an awesome system here. Yeah. I mean, this this is what. <laughs> this is for this the is, people, Mark. They're doing this for the people. Economic controls for the people. But it, just like Venezuela has defaulted on its most basic obligations to its people, like, say, laundry detergent. Now, of course. That's not the government's obligation to provide things in most places, but in Venezuela it is because they've taken over the grocery stores. Well, it's it becomes their obligation when they get in the way. Yeah. Uh, when they start stepping in, um, in, in the way, saying, we're going to help you get soap to wash your clothes or whatever. Well, then at that point, it does become their responsibility. The fiscal situation, oh, excuse me, uh, but just like Venezuela has defaulted on its most basic obligations, it might also default on its financial ones. Uh, the government there can't afford anything, not food, diapers, not a, not bond payments if oil stays around $50 a barrel. Now investors have assumed they'd be able to seize Citgo, which is owned by Venezuela's state-owned oil company, as payment if the country ever defaulted on its debt. But now it looks like that's not true. That, together with the falling oil prices, is why credit default swaps, basically debt insurance, on Venezuela's five-year bonds have exploded in the last few months. The fiscal situation is so dire that Citgo, which, remember, supposedly wouldn't count as part of the Venezuelan state, is planning on taking out $2.5 billion in debt to give to its parent company, which would presumably pass it along to the government. This makes sense as much as anything does in Venezuela, because Citgo has a higher credit rating than the government, so it can and borrow, and if it defaults, it will be just as if the country <laughs> sold it. It's a man-made tragedy, and the men who made it won't fix it. Maduro, for his part, blames the shortages on the parasitic private sector, while the food minister doesn't get what the big deal is, since he has to wait in line at soccer games. So, it turns out Lenin wasn't just right about the best way to destroy the capitalist system is to debauch the currency. It's also the best way, as Venezuela can tell you, to destroy the socialist one. You Quite know, a mess. Yeah, it's not going to—the the government can't fix this because you're asking somebody to manage the economy, and it's just too big and complicated. And, uh, it, you, uh, you know, it, it, it's, history has shown us over and over again. We just got to get out of the way. So, unfortunately, there's no plan to do that in the United States. The U.S. federal government is going to continue getting in the way. They're going Everything to that Venezuela does, um, the United States does, only the United States doesn't do it as big. Well, they do it as big in other ways, right? Like uh, the U.S. is the biggest imprisoning country in the world. Yeah, that's a uh, that's that's just that's the government. Uh, what, what what do they call it? Rent seeking, um, in the sense that you know, if they say we're imprisoning these bad guys that would harm you, then and you just have to pay us fifty thousand dollars a year per bad guy, then they're creating a uh, a system for 
you know, extracting money from you. But they're not trying to control the marketplace at near the level that uh, the Venezuelan government uh, does. And, and that's sure you don't want to kill the golden goose. And- well, that's that that's sort of socialist theory generally is is that you know that, that you know there's the, there's a hundred years of socialist theory behind economics not working. So, yeah, I mean, they've figured out how to dance around this in the United States fairly effectively. They've got a system that works well for the people in power. Uh, they're getting very, very wealthy off the backs of a lot of people who aren't as uh, as well off in the United States. And they're able to inflate the currency to the point where, you know, it's not outrageous. People aren't freaking out. There aren't any bank runs happening here. But, you know, they're still inflating the currency to the point where they can go on all kinds of warmongering things around the world and funnel money into the military industrial complex so they've seemed to they seem to have found kind of a sweet spot although eventually economics will come calling on the United States won't it well I mean something uh, something took basic I think it was about three trillion when uh, Obama got in office and it's about 18 trillion now is the national debt mm-hmm. um, that money was spent on something and you know there's what, lots of Warren involved yeah there. there's lots of Warren and there's lots of uh, there's some infrastructure that went uh, that was put in place well so. don't forget about the unfunded mandates as well as they've been called like the 50 trillion I think I've heard and you know social security payments and Medicare that's, that's coming in mandates. the future yeah. there's more coming up here you can explain what you mean by that here in a moment free talk live Lose the winter blues and warm up with hot flooring deals from Lumber Liquidators. Thinking about hardwood? Consider bamboo. We've got the number one brand and we'll help you get it for less. Like Strand Bamboo. It's twice as hard as oak and for a limited time, it's only $1.99. Why pay as much as $4.99 for bamboo at other stores? We've got deals in over 70 styles from an incredible $1.79. Plus, pre-finished hardwood, laminate, and more for less than half what you'll pay somewhere else. And 18 months special financing. Now is the time to warm up your home with new floors. So visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. DB Books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Anyone can publish on the internet, but not everyone is publishing material suited for online reading. According to the Yahoo Style Guide, it cautions that internet content has a few seconds, three or less, to encourage people to read more, to take action, or navigate to another one of your pages. So make it easy for readers to pick and choose. Isn't that the way you poke around online? Use short words, short sentences, short paragraphs, bulleted lists, and short pages. Front load what you write, putting the most important information at the beginning of headlines and paragraphs and sentences. Same goes for your keywords. What someone would likely type into the search box on Yahoo or Google. For more tips on communicating better online or in a job interview or everyday life, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll free here in the remaining moments of the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com. Another way to support the show. We mentioned shopping with us earlier. Another way is to become a Free Talk Live amplifier. You go to amp.freetalklive.com. It's five bucks a month, and you get perks like access to the Amp Only call in lines, the Amp Only podcast, as well as the Amp Only Facebook group, and more. You go and get signed up, and every now and then you get a chance at some contests that are only open to Free Talk Live amplifiers. And you know what? You don't even have to be a listener to win. Uh, Mark, uh, what was our most recent contest? We gave away a microphone, right? Yeah, it was a blue Yeti microphone that was uh, branded with the Free Talk Live logo. And... Hand-painted yeah, with was... the Free Talk Live logo. There's only one of these things in existence. Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com created it, and I thought it was really awesome. And he is awesome, by the way. Gave it away to uh, amplifiers, and uh, Shane won it. Shane, uh, we're not giving away his last name because we didn't tell him that we were necessarily going to yeah, announce it. On we don't the want air. you people coming to his house for dinner, right? And uh, and uh, you know it's interesting too because I when we were putting this contest together, I kind of felt like well maybe we should just let people enter the contest because you know we do have a few hundred amplifiers and I'm thinking maybe not everybody's really going to care about a microphone. I mean I know how I feel when someone gives me a gift I didn't ask for. I'm like I didn't want this thing. Then what? Now I've got this junk here. What am I going to do with it? I'm going to sell it or do whatever. So I kind of thought, well, maybe we should ask people to put entries into the contest. But uh, you had said, I think, no. Let's just draw. Let's just pick. You know, every amplifier will qualify. If they don't want it, they can just say no. They don't want it, and we'll redraw and we'll, you know, keep drawing until somebody actually wants the thing. Well, it turns out the first guy who we pick, you know, just randomly chose a number. Get ready to buy a microphone. Yeah, he was literally considering purchasing a microphone and then you you know we emailed him this i think you emailed him letting him know that he'd won and he was very very grateful for that it just one of those things where the universe it worked out yeah universe yeah yeah universe uh so that's pretty cool and he got that simply because he's a free talk live amplifier uh you can become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com get the perks you get benefits you get some you know sometimes you get access to contests we don't do them regularly it's just when they come up you know, you get the first crack at it, that kind of thing. You also usually get to see stuff uh, like, you know, previews of our new website, that kind of thing. All those sorts of unique factors will be given to you first uh, if you are a Free Talk Live amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. So there's a correction, Mark, that I think is important to make here, uh, not from anything we've said tonight. Now, of course, if you've caught us saying something wrong, feel free to call in and correct us anytime at 855-450-FREE. But this is a correction about the news piece that came out, I don't know, was it like a maybe two weeks ago? Maybe a week ago. Anyway, you recall the news about Eric Holder, the attorney general, announcing something about how the federal government's going to stop participating in asset forfeiture? Yes. Some sort of news story, news headlines about that. Pretty big deal, right? It sounded really big, and we reported it on Free Talk Live, like, wow, this is awesome news. Well, according to Reason Magazine, it's not as great as we might have thought. Okay. Apparently, the media has blown this out of proportion. This is from Jacob Sullum over at Reason.com. This morning, he says, I noted that the impact of the forfeiture reform announced by Attorney General Eric Holder last week will be limited 
by his except, uh, exception for state and local seizures that result from investigations assisted by or coordinated with federal authorities. I quoted Epen Thampy, the executive director of Americans for Forfeiture Reform, who argues that, quote— It's hard to say Ethan Thampy's name. Like, Epen, Epen, E-A-P-E-N. Epen, Epen Thampy, like you don't have a lisp. Uh, the director of Americans for Forfeiture Reform, who argues that, quote, the exception swallows the rule, that the Justice Department's own numbers suggest that that is pretty close to the truth. Holder's order applies only to adoption, which happens when a state or local agency seizes property on its own and then asks the Justice Department to pursue forfeiture under federal law. Hmm. Over the last six years, the Department of Justice says in the press release announcing Holder's new policy, adoptions accounted for roughly 3% mm. of the value of forfeitures in the Department of Justice Asset Forfeiture Program. By comparison, the program's reports to Congress indicate that equitable sharing payments to state and local agencies accounted for about 22% of the total deposits during those six years. See, I was thinking it was that number. That's what I thought it was. That means adoptions, which the DOJ says represented about 3% of deposits, accounted for less than 14% of equitable sharing. In other words, something like 86% of the loot that state and local law enforcement agencies receive through federal forfeitures will be unaffected by Holder's new policy. So, I, once again, with the law, things don't always sound like what they actually are, and when you actually dig down into the definitions of things, it turns out a little bit different. Yeah, I, I, I so a lot. I, I get where you're coming from. I was excited about it, and I thought it was a, a much better situation than it is. But I would say that... Uh, you know, that politicians, like anybody, responds to incentive. I don't think they respond. Well, I think their incentives are perverse, but uh, it's good that this was done by Holder because it looks like, uh, you know, it looked like a bigger thing than it was. And they got positive uh, reinforcement as a result. I mean, you know, all kinds of people were rejoicing. Sure. In my world, it was a pretty big deal because most, you know, lots of people on Facebook are saying, and so, the, you know, well, they, that's because this is a the, way that politicians realize that they can get, wow, the public will really like it if I do this. I get what you're saying. You're saying what you're pointing out here is that you think they maybe dip their toe in the water to see how things went. And, OK, that's an argument. And I don't know whether or not that's their true motivations yeah. or whatever. But here's the uh, excerpt from the way the media reported on it. Right. So you've got Reason Magazine, who's now nailed it down. They said this only applies to adoptions. That's a small percentage, like, you know. A very small percentage of the uh, the uh, the asset forfeiture, which of course, for those that don't know, asset forfeiture is usually applied to people that have drugs or cash, uh, where they're giving up houses and cars, and and the governments take these things and then they you know keep them for their police departments or sell them off. So that's not the impression left by the Washington Post, which broke the story on Friday of last week, saying, "quote Attorney General Eric Holder on Friday barred local and state police from using federal law to seize cash, cars, and other property without warrants or criminal charges. So that sounds like an across-the-board, yeah. we're ending this program. That's what it sounded like. Uh, the Post reported saying the new policy would, quote, virtually eliminate all cash and vehicle seizures made by local and state police from the equitable sharing program, when, as the numbers pointed out before, it's really only about 14% of that equitable share sharing program that will be eliminated in this case. Uh, but uh, let's well, see. I, I think that, you know, politicians, many politicians want to get a name for themselves. It's a really great thing for them to uh, get a get, great way for them to get a name for themselves by passing a law that makes it on a state or a federal level, wherever it is, because I know that it's been done here in New Hampshire. Currently, there is a law not passed, but proposed that would make asset forfeiture illegal for departments. Now, politicians have seen, I can get a lot of people behind me, people that will be excited about my campaign. And this is very difficult to do. You get people excited about, uh, you know, you as a politician. Well, here's a way to do it. But he's just the attorney general. I mean, he's not. Is he going to run for political office? No, no. I'm not talking about this. Isn't just good feedback for Eric Holder. It's not like politicians don't read the newspaper. I see what you're they saying. They do a much better job of reading the newspaper than most folks. These these people, these sociopaths, are excellent at sticking their finger in the mm -hmm. air and figuring out what direction the wind's blowing. So, I, it, what the current game of politics in the United States is simply incentivizing the sociopaths. I mean, the, you know, the the way yeah. that our system's set up, you have to be the best liar and cheat is the one that's going to win at the very least you want them to be uh you want them to be sort of dishonest in favor of the um the the, the average voting person
The Post did note deep in the story that Holder said equitable sharing would continue in cases, quote, where local and federal authorities are collaborating, unquote. But it did say that most of the money and property taken under the equitable sharing since 2008 was not seized in collaboration with federal authorities. That contradicts the Justice Department's numbers, which indicate the vast majority of equitable sharing comes not from adoption, but from collaboration of some sort, even if it is limited to federal support or for multiple, multiple ugh, multi-jurisdictional task forces. A 2012 report from the Government Accountability Office reinforces that point, noting that adoptions made up about 17% of all equitable sharing payments in 2010. And uh, as the author here at Reason, I'm going to skip down, they give another example of how Time Magazine reported on it, and even uh, the Drug Policy Alliance praised Holder for this new policy. Well, I praise him for it. I initially got caught up in the excitement, too, but the closer I looked, the less there was to the new policy. I don't mean to imply it won't accomplish anything worthwhile. Even eliminating 14% of the program is a welcome step, although 100% uh, would have been better. Holders yep. change surely. But not just 100 percent, but 100 percent, and then outlaw it for states. Or I oh, guess yeah. the federal government can't really outlaw it um, for states, but they could very well. They're always providing economic incentives for the states to crack down on their citizens. Why not have an economic incentive for the, uh, the these the states to not take people's property away from them? So there you go. I, th I thought that was important to correct because we'd kind of fallen under the spell of the news media that had reported that. And I'm grateful that uh, Reasons put the, the real story out there. We're out of time for tonight, but we'll be back tomorrow because we do this show seven nights a week live. And I think Adamo will be joining us from copblock.org tomorrow night. It's been Ian here with you. And Mark. And don't forget to join us tomorrow online. In the meantime, at freetalklive.com. Enjoy your weekend. This Free Talk Live. Most people think you have to seek out a God for finding meaning in life, but really meaning comes from your awareness yeah. that your next move will have a consequence to you, whether good or bad. The meaning is created by the, the person having the experience. It's inside experience you. Serve. Your awareness that your next move will have a consequence for your positive or negative view of the world, mm. that's I, where all meaning comes from. And I fully believe that it's your interpretation of your experiences, how you decide to act as a result of the circumstances that surround you that uh, will ultimately decide your fate here as far as you know will you have a pleasant experience or will it be right. a hellacious one i believe that i believe heaven in heaven and, and hell but i believe that they exist right every now. moment like you right can now. choose heaven and hell yeah. and the people that do bad things experience hell because doing bad things results in bad stuff but you can always choose otherwise you can begin at any sure. moment sure. to start over sinners again. can be redeemed free talk live seven nights a week from seven to ten eastern live on the liberty radio network at lrn.fm this Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Stouffer's, helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options, even on the busiest of nights. Find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at letsfixdinner.com. To get kids involved in dinnertime conversation, ask specific questions, not broad ones. Instead of what happened today at school, try what was the best thing that happened today. The more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, January 24th, 2015. Silver is trading at $18.37 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,295 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $237. 
Antiwar.com reports a day after Yemeni President Hadi, his entire cabinet, and the Prime Minister resigned, calm prevailed over the Yemeni capital of Sana'a, even as international officials warned of a power vacuum. Houthi rebels maintain effective control over the capital and indeed much of the nation, and while some of the officials welcomed Hadi's resignation, the group itself took no official position. Hadi and the other officials were in talks with the Houthis on a power-sharing deal, but clashes erupted when the talks stalled, leading Hadi supporters to claim a coup was being carried out. Yemen's parliament, such as it is, rejected Hadi's resignation and held emergency meetings on trying to resolve the situation. So far, they've not managed to resolve anything, however, and Hadi's return seems unlikely. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the Supreme Court on Friday agreed to review Oklahoma's controversial method of execution by lethal injection, taking up a case brought by three death row inmates who accused the state of violating the U.S. Constitution's ban on cruel and unusual punishment. The High Court just last week allowed the execution of a convicted killer in Oklahoma over the objection of its four liberal members. The three-drug process used by Oklahoma prison officials has been under scrutiny since the April 2014 botched execution of convicted murderer Clayton Lockett. He could be seen twisting on the gurney after death chamber officials failed to properly place an IV. The inmates challenged the state's procedures, arguing the sedative used by Oklahoma, Minazolom, cannot achieve the level of unconsciousness required for surgery, making it unsuitable for executions. The case draws fresh attention to the ongoing debate over whether the death penalty should continue in the United States at a time when most developed countries have abandoned it. The Death Penalty Information Center, which compiles executions statistics says only seven of the 32 states that still have the death penalty on the books executed inmates in 2014, with most coming in just three states, Texas, Missouri, and Florida. The group also says that the number of executed inmates has hit a 20-year low. The Supreme Court case directly affects only Oklahoma, but Florida uses a similar protocol so death row inmates there may seek stays based on the pending case. On January 15th, the High Court on a 5-4 to four vote declined to halt Oklahoma's execution of Charles Warner. Although five votes are needed to grant a stay application, only four are required for the court to take up a case. The inmates say Oklahoma's three-drug protocol can cause extreme pain, violating the Constitution's Eighth Amendment prohibition on cruel and unusual punishment. In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit tour.fppradio.com. That's T-O-U-R dot fppradio.com. UPI reports a federal judge on Friday ruled Alabama's ban on same-sex marriage is unconstitutional. U.S. District Judge Jenny Grenade struck down the Alabama Marriage Protection Act and an amendment that put it on the state's constitution in a lawsuit brought by two women, Carrie Searcy and Kim McKeon. They sought to have their out-of-state marriage recognized in Alabama so they would both be considered the legal parents of their eight-year-old child. The two were married in 2008 in California and have lived in Alabama since 2011. Grenade said the act was unconstitutional because it violated the Equal Protection and Due Process clause of the 14th Amendment. The ruling makes Alabama the 37th state, including Washington, D.C., to recognize same-sex marriage. Attorney General spokesman Mike Lewis said via email,